Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto had RPG gamer ability. Uzumaki Naruto wakes up one day to find out that his life has been turned into a RPG game, thanks to his gamer ability. What should he do about this? Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 7. Koryu and Toradora a couple of hours later sub area 2, training ground 13, I hate moles. Naruto yelped as he dodged the attack of yet another chakra mutated mole, as it attempted to hit him with its heavy digger claws. LV6, slavering star mole, almost as soon as he entered this sub area, these damned moles had attacked him. They came from underneath the ground and swiped with those damn oversized front claws. If it wasn't for his detect bloodthirst skill, he'd be in a world of hurt. So now he used his Iwa Bunshin to lure the bastard things to the surface so he could cut the bastard things to bits with Kanai. Thing is, they seemed to have an uncanny knack for being able to sniff out where he was and move to attack him. Kuso, he cursed, what the hell is with these things? How are they finding me? Pulling out a pair of shuriken, Naruto infused them with wind chakra and took aim. Futon. Kaden shuriken, he snarled before throwing them at the nearest mole. The two shuriken whirled in the air before descending upon their target, carving bloody rents in its fur and flesh as Naruto manipulated them from just under 4 meters away. This was the one part of his gamer abilities he hated, the need to level up all of his skills in order to improve them. Sure, it made sense, after a fashion, but it was still boring to do, unless you were fighting like this. With a shriek, the mole sagged to the ground, dead at last. These moles had thick fur that seemed to act as a kind of armor. Not that it helped much against wind chakra. Tiredly, Naruto regarded the window that popped up. Slavering star mole, x3 defeated. You gain 600 exp. Futon. Kaden shuriken, has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Doden. Iwa Bunshin has leveled up. LV2 LV3. Self-taught Bojutsu has leveled up. LV1 LV2. Not bad for the second mob. Naruto remarked. He trotted over to the corpses that were dissolving and revealing the loot. There was a nice wad of Ryo from each of them, about 750 each, in addition to a cured moleskin, or two. Finally, there was a scroll, another crafting recipe, for moleskin gloves. That's that, now how do I find the boss? Naruto mused aloud. He sighed as another window popped up. Slavering star moles, slain. 6 25ths grinding grand moles, slain. 0 tenths, helpful. The blonde orphan commented, now, time to replenish my clones. The moles had killed over half of his clones, smashing and rending at them with their claws. After that, he decided to inspect his stats. Status. He commanded. Name. Uzumaki Naruto class, the gamer. Level. 6 next level, 41.03% title. Academy student plus 25% EXP to LV10, age. 12 HP. 800 800 CP. 800 800 STR. 18 minus 5 STA. 38 minus 5, plus 1 O, Dex. 19 minus 5, Int. 16 plus 5, Wis. 18 Luck. Not bad, but still too heavily biased towards stamina. He said with a disbelieving look, how the hell is it so high? Ish. Resolving to discover the secret of his insane stamina at a later point, Naruto closed the window and set about luring out the moles. Sub Area 2 was pretty much the same as Sub Area 1, except the trees were clustered slightly more densely together. The first time he fought a grinding grand mole, he got a shock. Slavering star moles were only about the size of a Labrador, while these bad boys were the size of a Shetland pony, the digger claws were the size of dustbin lids and the blunt claws were still sharp enough to draw blood. Still, all of the mole monsters had one key weakness, they were very, very slow. While one Iwa Bunshin distracted them, three more stabbed and whacked away with Gansetsuken, while the real Naruto attacked with his Kaden Shuriken from a distance and occasionally restoring clones that had been destroyed. Finally, he grunted as he killed the last mole that he needed to complete his hunting list. Just as he finished speaking, the ground started to tremble, sending Naruto and his clones stumbling across the ground. What? What the heck's going on Dadbeo? 
He yelped before he was thrown back by something erupting from beneath the ground, something far larger than any mole he'd faced before. It was massive, the size of a one-story house, and it was only halfway out of the ground. Black velvety fur, a short snout with jaws concealing sharp fangs and massive digging claws that were each large enough to pick up a grown man quite comfortably. Oh observe. Naruto croaked as he looked at the field boss in awe. LV8 Mojera Wagara, the massive mole a common mole mutated by oversaturation of chakra, this one has reached truly massive proportions. A large amount of Dodan chakra was used in this area of the field, allowing this chakra mutant to use bastardized Dodan ninjutsu. Special status. Slow and purposeful, iron muscles, Dodan sensing, paralyzing toxin special abilities, territorial aggression. Oh, dear Kami, Naruto breathed. He pressed, slow and purposeful, with a trembling finger. Slow and purposeful passive, you may move slowly, but it is always with a purpose. With the appropriate force behind your movements, nothing can stop you. Large creature only. Reduces movement speed by 50%. Allows holder of this skill to ignore, skill interrupt, and, attack interrupt, effects. Increases knockback effect by 50%. Note to self, do not get in the way of those damn claws, he thought with a sweat drop. He'd be sent flying into the Hokage monument. Dodin sensing, active because of either natural ability or extreme training, you can use your skills with Dodin ninjutsu to detect the movements of anything that touches the earth and rocks around you. Usually, this technique is developed to make up for poor or non-existent sight. Particularly skilled users can even read attacks based on the weight distribution of people standing on the earth. Allows the user an 80% chance of detecting enemies standing on the ground. Allows the user a 20% chance to read the attack of an enemy as long as they execute it on the ground. Costs 30 CP minute. So that's how the bastards were tracking me. Naruto exclaimed before swearing up a storm. Paralyzing toxin, active, passive, you have in your possession a powerful toxin that causes paralysis after entering the bloodstream of your opponents. Whether it is smeared on a sword, loaded into a poison dart or a natural part of your saliva, it matters not. The only issue is actually getting it into the enemy's bloodstream. If a natural part of the user's body, passively grants full immunity to your own toxin and a 50% resistance to similar types of toxins actively grants a 55% chance of poisoning an enemy with the status effect paralysis if struck by a toxin-loaded weapon. Medium used for toxin, saliva. Territorial aggression, passive, you hate it when others of your own gender enter your territory and immediately attack any aggressively. Woe betides any who enter your territory incautiously. Gender affected. Male, passively forces you to attack the nearest applicable target on site. Passively adds 20% to hit ratio against all applicable enemies. Crap on a stick. Naruto swore, shit, well, nothing to it but to do it. He had not come this far to be beaten by an oversized wallet, damn it. Right, you lot. Attack from a distance with Gansetsuken. Naruto ordered six clones, the rest of you get up close and personal. Stab and slash the bastard. What'll you be doing, boss? One Iwa Bunshin asked suspiciously. I'll be in there with you. Naruto grinned, if this guy can track my location like the others, hiding is pointless as long as I'm touching the ground, so I might as well see how well this guy does at finding someone climbing all over him. With that said, Naruto and his Iwa Bunshin set to work. First off, the Iwa Bunshin all fired a Gansetsuken barrage that struck the mole in various locations, including one lucky shot that hit it in its right eye, blinding it. Enemy right eye blinded. Vision remaining. 110 degrees on the left. Mojera let out a wild animalistic scream of pain before slamming its paw on the ground, sending a massive lump of compressed earth towards Naruto and his clones. Scatter. Naruto yelled as he moved like greased lightning to avoid the rock attack. His clones were just as quick on the uptake, but one was crushed nevertheless. Damn it. Naruto cursed. One twelfth of his line of battle gone already. What the heck was that? It had hit the ground and the next thing, a large boulder popped out. Must be a jutsu. He concluded in irritation, same plan as before. You five with me, the rest of you turn that mole into a pincushion. Right, the Iwa Bunshin shouted. With a roar of challenge, Naruto and five of his clones charged the mole, sticking to its blind side, while the other six started peppering Mojero with Gansetsuken as fast as they could create them. 
This strategy hadn't been possible during the battle against the berserk fox squirrel, as it and its minions had been fast and agile, able to dodge and attack any clones who had hung back to throw anything. Against Mojera on the other hand, this was a very feasible one as there were no minions and the mole was slow. Damn. This mole's got tough skin. One Iwa Bunshin growled as he shoved his stone spear into the field boss's hide. Iron muscles, remember, the original barked back, now less talk, more stabbing. Mojera growled at the attacks and swiped blindly at Naruto's clones with its right paw. They all dodged, but the attack had been eerily accurate, passing right through where they had been standing, probably thanks to the Doden sensing skill it possessed. Keep moving. Naruto ordered, stab and move. Don't stay in one place for too long or it'll get you. Following his own advice, Naruto used the tree climbing skill to climb on top of the boss and started stabbing it all over its body, even as the long distance group kept up a steady bombardment of Gansetsuken. Driven half mad by the pain, Mojero lashed out wildly with his claws, smashing three of the closest clones into rubble, making Naruto growl in frustration. Because of the lower limit imposed by his ability, the smallest number of rock clones he could create was five, and the most he could have out was twelve, thus until at least one more was destroyed, he couldn't replenish his army. A window popped up a few minutes of stabbing that made him growl in frustration. Six of your Iwa Bunshin have run out of chakra and crumbled to pieces. He leapt off of the back of the field boss and quickly summoned more clones so he had the maximum limit out again. He hated barfing up rocks, so that's why he got off the mole. You know, aside from the fact he can squash my clones in a single hit, this is actually far easier than the damn squirrel with the demon fox's chakra. Naruto though as he leapt over one large claw swipe of the boss, unlike that one, I can read this one's attacks much better and dodge out of the way before it hits me. It was true. While the field boss possessed a high defense thanks to its iron muscles, and had a high attack because of its sheer size and slow and purposeful ability, the mole's lack of speed made this a far easier fight than the sub-area one boss fight. After about an hour of cutting the damn mole up, a window popped up. Mojera Wagara is retreating. Kill the minions it summons in less than 5 minutes or it will have 25% of its health restored when it re-emerges. E. Naruto yelped. What the hell was with this? With a long moan, Mojera Wagara retreated underground, slipping back into the hole from which it had emerged. Erupting from the ground around the hole in its place were three grinding grand moles joined by a large window to one side with a timer that started counting down. 5 o'clock, 4.59. Kill him. At the blonde boy's command, the Iwa Bunshin charged the pony-sized moles and began efficiently cutting them to pieces and stabbing them with a mix of kanai and gansetsuken. Naruto deployed his Kaiden Shuriken and was pleased to see that the level up that the skill had undergone had increased the range from 4 meters to 5. Yay. Less chance of being attacked while using the Jutsu. It was close, but his clones just and no more succeeded in killing the three moles before the time limit expired, with 001 left on the clock. You have successfully defeated the minions of Mojera Wagara within the time limit. It returns to the field exactly as it was when it left. The rumbling ground told Naruto that the oversized chakra mutant was going to make his grand entrance soon. He pulled his clones back so they wouldn't be crushed by the boss when he popped out of his hole. When that happened, the towering tunneler was met by a hail of kanai, shuriken and stone spears that set it yowling in pain. In response, it sent another boulder at Naruto and his clones. It took another two grueling ore to kill the mole, but when it did, Naruto felt exultation. That was not a particularly hard fight, but it was a test of his stamina, which immediately made him grateful for the quirk that gave him a sufficiently high amount of STA. Grinding Grand Mole, X3 defeated. You gained 750 EXP. Field Boss, Mojera Wagara, the massive mole defeated. You gained 1200 EXP. Your level has gone up by 1. 6 to 7. You have 5 attribute points to spend. Secondary Doden Affinity, has leveled up. 2 to 3. Natural Futon Affinity, has leveled up. 1 to 2. Doden. Gansetsuken no Jutsu, has leveled up. 2 to 3. Phew, that is a lot of leveling up today. Naruto whistled slightly, impressed by the amount of skills that had leveled up. Gotta get more Futon Jutsu though, onto the best part. Loot. 
he delegated his clones to sorting through and gathering the loot from the three grinding grand moles while he dealt with the boss loot drop personally, the corpses having dissolved to nothing while he read the notification window. Trotting over to the pile that was just at the edge of the molehill, Naruto grinned at the cash that was sitting there. He grabbed it and put it in his inventory's money section. You have gained 10,000 Ryo. That'll help pay the rent, the blonde orphan muttered before turning his attention to the scrolls, of which there were three. He grabbed one. You have acquired the, Doden, Dongan no Jutsu, scroll. Would you like to learn this? Why, n, ha, huh, earth style, rock bullet jutsu, is it? Naruto mused, why not? It'll be nice to have a heavy hitting jutsu up my sleeve. Hitting the, why, button. He watched in fascination as the paper and ink scroll dissolved into blue light before being absorbed into his chest. No matter how many times he saw that, he never got tired of seeing it. Doten. Dongan no Jutsu, active, LV1. 100 EXP, by slamming their hand or foot on the ground after completing the hand signs, the user can send a large boulder or manhir at the opponent. As this Jutsu only requires two hand signs, it can be performed quickly. The drawback is its short range and slow speed, although these are somewhat improved upon at higher levels. Actively sends a Manhir boulder at the opponent up to 3 meters away, causing 50 points of damage plus an additional 10 points for every level of secondary Doden affinity, you possess max 10 levels. The difference between a Manhir and a boulder is purely cosmetic and is entirely up to the user during the hand sign sequence. Hand signs. Horse, monkey. Costs 50 CP for use. Huh, needs to be leveled up before it'll be of use in combat, but it's cool. Naruto judged. For making an accurate judgment, you receive plus one whiz. I swear I am going to hurt whoever sends these messages. He growled with a tick mark on his head. Yeah, I'm not all that smart, but I'm not stupid, damn it. Shaking his head and muttering invectives under his breath, he grabbed the second scroll, which turned out to be a crafting recipe for a moleskin jacket. Not exactly useful, but it would be cool to make. Finally, he turned his attention to the last scroll. You have acquired the, Doden, Mogoragakur no Jutsu, scroll, would you like to learn this? Why, n, hiding like a mole Jutsu? Naruto quoted doubtfully before hitting the, why, button, well, why not? At least it can't hurt to see what it can do. Doden, Mogoragakur no Jutsu, active, LV1. 0-hundred, rumored to have been created in and is used extensively in Iwagakur no Sato, the hiding like a mold technique allows one to change earth to sand by channeling chakra into it, thus allowing the user to dig through it in a similar manner to a mole. The chakra field covers the entire body and no more. The sand can be made to revert to earth after the user travels far enough away from it, leaving no sign that the user has passed by. The user can still tell where they are through the use of magnetic fields. The user can actively sink into and travel through earth and soil at walking speed. The user can actively track their position via magnetic fields, triangulating their position relative to anything attached to the earth, within a maximum range of 10 meters. Hand signs. Dog. Monkey. Boar. Costs 40 CP per minute. Cool. I can think of more than a few ways to kick ass with this jutsu, even though I can't exactly attack with it. Naruto cackled as his mind explored all the possibilities, now, what else is there? Aside from a truckload of cured moleskins there was only one other thing left behind, a note. To the shinobi who defeated Mojero Wagura, if you were reading this note, then you have defeated the second field boss, a commendable achievement. Do not get cocky, however. The boss in the next field is stronger than the berserk fox squirrel and Mojero Wagura put together. I would recommend acquiring a weapon other than kanai and shuriken before you confront him. Towards that end, once you have finished reading this note, channel some chakra into this paper. You will like the result. The forest lord. Okay, who is this forest lord guy? Naruto demanded as he looked around suspiciously, is he watching me or something? Geez, alright, let's see what this paper is all about. Placing it very carefully on the ground, Naruto channeled chakra into it with a single, finger. A puff of smoke erupted from the paper, revealing, an ingot of a silvery metal. It was about the same length and breadth as an A4 notebook and was at least 4 inches thick. It had to weigh at least 50 kilograms. Observe. Chakra metal ingot, a solid bar of the rare and potent chakra metal. 
A skilled blacksmith can melt it down and forge it into weapons or armor. Metal purity. 999.90. Holy hell, this, this must be worth a fortune. The blonde said as his jaw hit the ground. He didn't know squat about the purity of metal, but he did know, from what he had heard around town, that the purer the metal, the more value it had. If that was anything approaching the truth here, the purity of this ingot meant he could buy the Uchiha clan compound with this block of chakra metal, if not a bit more than that. Picking the ingot slab seemed more appropriate, but whatever, Naruto heaved it with great difficulty into his inventory. He was really appreciating the fact that it was weightless. Phew, time to head home, I think. Naruto said, need to rest up for my match with Sakura-chan tomorrow. With that, he jogged off to the exit. The next day, after the academy training field 14 Naruto peered cautiously into the training field, keeping a cautious eye open. This was a training field in use by an active duty quad of shinobi, not an abandoned one like training field 13. Standing in the center of the field was a boy who looked to only be about 3 years older than he was. The boy had neatly cut dark green hair, wore a pair of plain glasses and was dressed in the standard Konoha Chunin outfit. He was throwing kanai at a training kun dummy that was nailed to a nearby tree, making it look like some freaky voodoo ceremony. You can come out now, academy student kun. The boy called without breaking stride in his throwing. You aren't half bad. Naruto noted as he left the tree line. He hadn't been using his stealth skill. Just keeping quiet, like any ordinary academy student would be doing, not having learnt stealth to the point the had. Chunin Squad 14 Leader LV23 Kitamura Yasaka. So what are you doing here, kid? The Chunin asked as he turned around. Um, I'm looking for Isaka, pardon me, Takasu Taiga. Naruto replied, I have a message for her from Higurashi Tenten. Kitamura paled slightly. Oh no, don't tell me she found out about Toradora. Kinda. Naruto replied, I found it in training field 13 while I was, well training. I thought it could be fixed, so I took it to Tenton. She went spare and almost strangled me demanding to know where I found it. Yikes, Kitamura muttered, Taiga is due here in the next 5 minutes or so. You can wait for her here. Thanks. Naruto nodded, what was that fast draw technique you were using, by the way? Ah. Oh, that. The Chunin grinned, that was my shurikenjutsu specialty, the Kodokanbu soaring sword dance fast draw technique. It's a mid chunin technique. It makes my Hiko Yoshin look slow by comparison. Naruto shook his head, I've got a lot of training to do. Don't be downhearted, a master with the Hiko Yoshin can easily beat an amateur using Koto Kanbu. The chunin told him kindly, if you like I can critique you on your technique. I thought active duty shinobi weren't allowed to teach academy students. Naruto pointed out, something his Gigi had told him. Ah, but I'm not teaching you. Kitamura corrected him with a grin, I'm just going to offer constructive criticism while we wait. And so it was that Naruto, through a quick 5 minute tutorial from Kitamura, earned two levels in his Hiko Yoshin fast draw technique by the time the newlyweds arrived. The Pomptop Tiger LV24 Takasu Taiga. The delinquent dragon LV23 Takasu Ryuji the girl he had come looking for was tiny. Really, she was only a head taller than he was, if that. She had tired eyes that indicated she had only gotten up not long ago. She wore black knee socks and shinobi sandals, a pair of sports shorts covered by a short skirt, a red kimono top, a chunin vest and had a sword slung over one shoulder. Her long orange gold hair was tied back into a sensible ponytail. Her husband was at least a couple of feet taller than she was. He was built solidly, but wasn't overly muscled. His face was scary because he had sonpaka eyes and his short blue hair had a long fringe as if to cover that up. He was dressed similarly to Kitamura and had the hilt of a tanto poking up over one shoulder. Takasu-kun, Taiga. Kitamura greeted his teammates, who were holding hands. Kitamura-kun. Taiga said with a yawn. Yasaka. Ryuji greeted him warmly. Who's the kid? Tentens found out about Toradora. Naruto stated bluntly. This bit of news jerked Taiga fully awake. She glared at Naruto with her dark amber eyes. Say what? She growled. Naruto though that he could see some panic past the grumpy anger in her narrowed eyes. The blonde boy sighed and recounted the tale for her yet again, with more details this time. Damn that bitch Amy. Taiga growled. Eh. Hey. Katsuragi Amis in my class. Naruto protested. 
Kawashima Amy, from our class. Ryuji explained, she's a genin on Team 15, along with Kushida Minori and Kano Sumayar. An all Kunoichi team, this surprised Naruto greatly. The normal setup was similar to Team 14 in front of him, two ninja and one Kunoichi. On rare occasions, it was two Kunoichi and one ninja. Single gender teams were very, very rare. Yep. When we graduated, there were more Kunoichi aspirants than ninja aspirants in our class, so two all Kunoichi teams were formed. Kitamura replied, Amma's team were the only one of the two to pass. She and Taiga get along like oil and water. Stupid Chihuahua. Taiga groused, stupid infiltration specialty. Stupid gauntlets. A. Naruto couldn't make out any kind of reason to those statements. Stupid Chihuahua, is what my wife here calls Amy. The male Takasu explained, they were rivals of sorts at the academy. Taiga specializes in Kenjutsu, while Amy was a stealth and infiltration specialist. Her weapons of choice are a matched set of gauntlets called the Kanibasami Kagote, crab scissor gauntlets that break most weapons that they catch between them. The damage looked like a hammer or some kind of massive weight hit the blade though. Naruto pointed out, exactly what you're supposed to think. Taiga spat out, the gauntlets have a pair of spikes in each of them that are engraved with fuenjutsu that greatly magnify the concussive force of their hits. Being trapped between the gauntlets and hit by both spikes simultaneously from both sides is what destroyed Toradora. It was during a spar shortly before I proposed to Taiga. Ryuji took up the tale, Amy can be, abrasive, personality-wise and Taiga has a habit of being blunt to the point of rudeness, although she is getting better at that. Anyway, they got worked up in the spar and Toradora was broken. Amy threw it away afterwards, but it puzzles me as to how it got into training ground 13. Very likely, Naruto knew, his gamer power had something to do with it. Anyway, Tenten says that if you want Toradora back, you'll have to go to her shop in, two days and explain exactly how Toradora broke. Naruto completed his message. Unfortunately, we are leaving on a border patrol mission tomorrow morning. Kitamura said regretfully, could you inform Higurashi-san that Taiga will pick it up in a month. She, was pretty pissed when she was talking about reforging it. Naruto said slowly, she might sell it or something. If you're heading out tomorrow, I'd find her and explain everything today. That way, she can make a decision today about what to do with it. Sounds like a plan. Kitamura agreed, in fact, we'll all go and explain things. B but Kitamura-kun. Taiga protested, before Ryuji interrupted her. No buts, Taiga. Her husband told her firmly, I'm not going to let you explain something on your own. You try and take the blame entirely on yourself and act surly and get into a fight. You know that as well as I do. Boo. Taiga pouted cutely at Ryuji. Okay then, I guess I'd better go then. Naruto said, good luck with Tenten. Thanks kid. Kitamura said with a nod, keep practicing and good luck graduating. Team 14, move out. With a swirl of leaves, the three chunin vanished, leaving Naruto alone in the training field. He raised an eyebrow as a window popped open. Quest updated. A broken blade can still cut. You have delivered the message to Takasu Taiga and advised her to talk to Tenten as soon as possible, as her team is leaving on a mission. Return to Higurashi's in two days time to complete the quest. Okay, this is weird. Why is there no quest reward or failure notices? Naruto wondered. What an odd quest. The boy shook his head. He had to get back for his tutoring session with Sakura, not to mention the taijutsu fight afterwards. That was something he was not looking forward to. Later on Naruto's apartment, no, Naruto. Sakura sighed, you use this equation to calculate the angle of the shot and this one to calculate the force involved. I hate maths. Naruto groaned, when I become Hokage, I'm so doing something about this. The Pinkett had decided that today, they would attend to the theory of Shurikenjutsu, although even she had to admit that she saw little point in it other than as a way to explain how to execute an especially complex throw, like the infamous Uchiha Shuriken Tawami no Jutsu, Uchiha Shuriken Deflection Jutsu. Needless to say, Naruto hated it. Come on Naruto. Sakura coaxed him, it's just numbers. Evil numbers. The blonde grumbled before reluctantly buckling down to fight against the endless legion of numbers in their many and varied complexities. That'll do. Sakura said an hour later. She had to admit that Naruto had done his best, although he had made several mistakes. 
Still, they were minor ones, so progress was perceivable if not all that quick. Thank Kami for that. Naruto cheered. Inside voice, Baka. Sakura rolled her eyes at Naruto's exuberance. Sorry, Sakura-chan. Naruto grinned, ready to get your butt kicked. As if, the pinket shot back, the one who is going to lose around here is you, Naruto. That's the spirit. The blonde boy's grin didn't abate an inch, let's get down to the dojo room and we'll get right down to it. Sakura followed him down to the room he had showed her the previous day and was pleasantly surprised to see that it looked as good as new. The mats were brand new, the floorboards were freshly polished and the walls were clean. You did a good job. The pinket admitted. Iwa Bunshin are really good at chores, as long as the orders are simple. Naruto replied with a shrug. Clean this, scrub that, you know stuff like that. Anything more complicated tends to get messed up. This made the Kunoichi aspirant look thoughtful. She made a note to do some research on solid clone jutsu, as they really looked useful. Let's get to it then. Sakura stepped into the middle of the room and waited for Naruto to move opposite her, first to fall three times loses. Agreed. Yep. No gouging or hitting below the belt or you lose by default. Naruto said with a nod. How do we start things off then? Sakura asked. Like this. Naruto pulled a one Ryo coin from his pocket, when the coin hits the ground, we start. Sounds good. She agreed. With a simple flick of his thumb, Naruto sent the coin spinning into the air. Sakura assumed the basic defensive stance of the academy's Hakage Taijutsu style, while Naruto assumed a neutral stance that favored neither offense nor defense. With a light metallic, cling, the coin struck the floor. Naruto charged forwards and sent a kick flying at Sakura, who was taken aback by the speed of the attack. She barely dodged it by leaning back and then counterattacked by snapping her right leg up, hoping to hit him in the jaw, a standard counterattack in the Hakage style. Naruto grabbed her leg and pushed her off balance, making her land on her butt with a squeak of pain and surprise. Naruto won, Sakura-chan, nil. He proclaimed. He, he barely had to make an effort. Sakura thought in disbelief, I'm the top Kunoichi and he had me on the ground in less than half a minute. Shanaru. Like I'm gonna let him win. Cha, her inner self snarled, adorned with weapons and ready to go to war. Kick his ass, with a scowl, Sakura flipped to her feet and went on the attack. She started with a series of punches, moved on to a three-kick combo and ended with a spinning roundhouse kick. Naruto just blocked the punches, dodged the kicks and grabbed her leg again. This time he executed a throw, sending Sakura tumbling over his head until she came to a stop when she crashed into the wall. Damn, damn it, Sakura growled. She was already tired, which proved Naruto's point about her lack of stamina and physical strength, making her even madder. I'm the best kunoichi in our class. Why am I so weak? Haruka sensei doesn't push you girls that hard. Naruto replied, you rigidly adhere to the textbook Hakage style and don't try and alter it to suit you. You also rarely train yourself because you are obsessed with your looks. Your diet prevented your body from building its muscles. Ino has a slight advantage over you because she's from a shinobi clan, but I could take both you and her on at the same time without too much trouble because you are both fangirls. With a roar of anger, Sakura leapt to her feet and charged at Naruto, fist swinging as she practically went berserk on him. I am nothing like Ino Buddha, she roared. Really? Naruto asked as he noted that her swings were stronger than before, you both like the same guy, Sakura-chan. That says a lot about you both, I'd say. Shanaru. Sakura finally got Naruto with a solid punch to the gut that made him stagger and fall to the ground. Ow. Man, I need to work on my stance. Naruto shook his head before grinning at Sakura, nicely done. Like I'm going to lose. Sakura panted out. Sorry, Sakura-chan, but you are. Naruto replied softly. He spun around in a low kick, standing and kicking at the same time. He took Sakura's legs out from underneath her, making her slam into the floor and let out a large, boom, as air was forcibly expelled from her lungs. I, lost. Sakura said blankly. Yep, yeah, you did well, but your lack of physical training was the cause of your defeat. Naruto said not unkindly. He helped her to her feet and led her back up to his room. So then, looks like I'm going to be getting help from you with my physical training. Sakura said with a sigh. She honestly hadn't expected to lose, but she had shaken on the wager and she was not in the habit of breaking her word, so she was going along with it. 
Losing to the class Dobi really stung though. Don't worry, Sakura-chan. Naruto said with a grin, once you graduate, you'll thank me. After Sakura leaves with Naruto, okay then, let's see what we have here. Naruto said before looking at the messages that had been popping up during the last hour or so. You have studied diligently. Plus one, int. Quest complete. Tough love. You have defeated Haruno Sakura in a taijutsu match. Although this has slightly lowered your relationship with her, it is for the greater good. Quest completion reward. Minus 50 relationship with Haruno Sakura, plus 150 EXP, plus 500 Ryo. Beginner's Hakage Taijutsu has leveled up. LV5 LV6. That's cool. Naruto muttered, what the, another quest. Quest alert. Growing a cherry blossom. You have been given the task of improving Haruno Sakura's physical condition. Do your best and show some results before graduation. Increase Haruno Sakura's STR and STA by 5 before graduation to succeed. Quest completion reward. Plus 750 EXP. Plus 600 relationship with Haruno Sakura. Random item reward. Quest failure. Plus 500 EXP. Minus 200 relationship with Haruno Sakura. So I have just under 7 months to raise her STA and STR to a decent level. Does that include her getting rid of her malnourished status? Naruto wondered aloud. The window flashed for a moment before adding in the provision that the increase does not come from her malnourished flaw being removed, he had to get her to physically exercise. I had to ask. Naruto sighed before turning his mind. Refurbishing the dojo to basic usability had been good and everything, but he still had to get his hands on some training dummies so he could practice on them and hopefully level up his taijutsu to the point that he could finally absorb the intermediate book. Leveling these things up sucks ass. Naruto grumbled as he headed out to do some shopping. At the same time Hokage's office, I see. Serutobi sighed, this corroborates my own investigations, Inoichi-san. The elderly Hokage regarded the Yamanaka clan head thoughtfully. He had arrived here not long after getting off shift at the T&I department and had asked to see him about a disturbing matter. Who would remove information about the Uzumaki clan and Uzushiogakur from our textbooks? Inoichi asked in bewilderment. The same kind of people who would throw out a five-year-old boy from the orphanage. The same kind of people who would charge him extra for substandard food and water. Serutobi growled, the same kind of people who would organize and take part in raiding his apartment and destroying all of his possessions save for those he secreted away just in case. That is the kind of malice we are dealing with here. Inoichi growled as well. The boy was the same age as his daughter and the thought of someone treating her like Naruto had been treated sent his anger skyrocketing through the roof. No child should have to endure that. Naruto-kun has tried to conceal the extent of the civilian's ire against him from me. The Hokage said sadly, it wasn't that he didn't trust me, far from it. It was that he thought he could handle it on his own. Where have you ever heard of a child who is not a shinobi making such a decision? One who has been forced to grow up faster than he should have. The younger man replied grimly, so his usual, happy-go-nuts persona is a mask. Makes sense. Not a mask per se, a shield. Serutobi corrected him, if the villagers don't see him affected negatively by their bullying, they'll not be as, zealous in their acts of malice as they would otherwise be. At least, that is what I assume was the general line of Naruto-kun's thinking. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Inoichi quoted, it does sound like something a child would think up. I take it you've made it clear to him not to hide things from you anymore. About the villagers, yes. Serutobi allowed, but it seems he has another secret that he hasn't told me about. Uma Horse witnessed him absorbing a scroll that he had bought while under a henge. Absorbing. Inoichi sounded incredulous. It dissolved in a burst of blue light that then flew into Naruto-kun's chest. Serutobi said, no chakra was detected and it was no genjutsu. I am, quite frankly, at a loss as to how to explain it. Why not just take the direct approach? Inoichi asked. Because that would reveal the fact he is being followed around Konoha, everywhere but the academy and training ground 13 anyway. Serutobi replied, I see no issue in waiting for Naruto-kun to come to me, as he always does, eventually. Seeing Inoichi's skeptical look, the old man chuckled, Naruto-kun can be mature when the right circumstances call for it, but he is a 12-year-old boy. 
He will likely show off this bizarre skill to me in hopes of impressing me or something. He has a hard time keeping secrets from me. As you say, Hokage-sama. Inoichi said, will you be keeping the Anbu tracking him? Yes. Thanks to recent events, I can even justify it to Danzo. Sarutobi replied sourly. Shimura Danzo was a pain in his neck, someone who had been a part of Team Toborama under the Nadaim Hokage himself. The man had always thought that he should have been Sandame Hokage rather than Sarutobi and had done his utmost to counterbalance the Hokage's weak policies with his personal Anbu group, Root. Danzo had been urging him at least once a month for the last 12 years to turn Naruto into a weapon, for the good of Kanahagakur, not that that was the real motivation behind it, Sarutobi knew. No, the old Warhawk wanted control of the village Jinchuriki to oust Sarutobi from his position and become the Hokage himself. For multiple reasons, this was not something that the Sandame was going to allow to happen. For one, Danzo would get at his surrogate grandson over his cold dead body. For another, Danzo's policies would destroy Konoha, turn it into a mockery of Senju Hashirama's vision. This he could not allow. I have been making a few inquiries and the Anbu have rounded up a few people mostly former council members, oddly enough and it would be appreciated if you could handle them personally tomorrow. Sarutobi continued, returning to the original topic of conversation. It will be a pleasure, Hokage-sama. Inoichi replied with a smirk, my wife is unhappy about Naruto's treatment and will be happy I'm working towards resolving some part of it. Good to hear. Sarutobi smiled. After a few more minutes of conversation about who Inoichi would be interrogating, the man left. Now then, when will you come to talk to me, Naruto-kun? Sarutobi mused. Chapter 8. Reforged Blades and Cage Bunshin the next day, early morning Naruto's new apartment recipe mastered. You have successfully mastered the recipe plain cooked rice. You gained 50 EXP to the cooking skill. Well, that was easy. Naruto remarked absently. He had only been trying to cook rice for the last couple of days, so he was surprised to have gotten it mastered this quickly. Then again, it is very difficult to mess up putting rice and water inside a rice cooker and leaving it to cook, so maybe it wasn't all that surprising. Mentally consulting his knowledge of his cooking skills recipes, Naruto decided that the next thing to try was toast. He truthfully didn't have a preference either way for breaded products, but it was the next recipe that was level one on the list he had. In the cooking skill description, there was a drop-down menu that allowed him to pull up recipes that he knew and view them, as well as how well he could cook them and their relative difficulty levels. The more complicated recipes even required him to have mastered certain recipes beforehand in order to cook them. Setting the bowl of rice on the table, Naruto sat down, picked up his chopsticks and chomped away at it as he made plans for what to do after the academy was let out today. He would have to see when Sakura-chan wanted to have her lessons in taijutsu, as well as water all of his plants. There was also the issue of the chakra metal ingot he had received from the mysterious, forest lord, that was watching his progress in training area 13. Naruto had no idea about prices for such a thing, but he would have to guess that it would be quite expensive indeed. This meant that questions would be asked when people found out about the fact he had it. He didn't know how widespread the knowledge of chakra mutations was, but he knew the civilians would accuse him of stealing it from someone. The best thing to do would be to take the ingot to his Gigi and tell him where he had gotten it, or a version of where he had gotten it at least. He would simply claim to have found it in the burrow of the giant mole he had defeated. The fact that it had been sealed inside of a letter was a detail he didn't want to bother the Hokage with. The old man had enough on his plate to deal with without having to wonder and worry about his surrogate grandson's mysterious power that seemed to alter the world around him like a permanent genjutsu. Naruto would tell him at some point, just not now. Yash. Off to the academy, the blonde orphan declared as he finished his meal. He stood up and charged out of his home towards the academy. As always, the glares of the villagers keep making Mike detect bloodthirst skill more powerful. Naruto thought with a mental chuckle as he jogged towards the academy. Seriously, just walking around Konoha for a couple of days outside the academy building made his detect bloodlust skill level up. Naruto seriously didn't know what the civilian's problem was regarding him. It was driving him nuts just thinking about it. Some time back, he had asked Gigi if his parents had done something to make the villagers hate him. 
it had been the only thing he could think of that could possibly explain the amount of animosity that was directed towards him. Sarutobi had looked pained for a moment before schooling his facial expression and denying it, explaining that Naruto's parents had been honorable shinobi who would have died before betraying Kanahagakur. Deciding that what would come would come in its own time, Naruto put his ruminating to one side and sped on. After the academy is let out for the day Hokage's office, hey Gigi. Naruto called as he strode into the office of the Hokage, a cheerful smile on his face. Ah Naruto-kun, it has been a while. Sarutobi greeted him with a grandfatherly smile, how have things been with Sakura-chan? Naruto flushed. Okay. I beat her in a taijutsu spar yesterday so she's going to start training harder. Combine that with eating properly, I think she'll be close to Genin standard by the time the exams come around, I think. I think she'll have some help from her father as well, so I rather think you are right. The Hokage chuckled, now, what can I do for you, Naruto-kun? Not that I'm not delighted to have an excuse to stop my paperwork, but it must be finished at some point. Ah, yeah, I found something in training ground 13 the other day and I wanted to show you it. Naruto said with a nod. Oh. Sarutobi raised an eyebrow. Naruto drew a scroll out of his pocket and unrolled it to reveal the sealing array. Placing a finger on the array, Naruto pulsed some chakra into the seal and a large amount of chakra smoke exploded from it as the object inside was unsealed. When the smoke cleared to reveal the ingot of chakra metal, Sarutobi's eyes bulged out and his jaw flapped open in disbelief. Impossible. That much chakra metal. How? Where, were the thoughts that were swirling around in his head as he gaped at the chakra metal ingot. Once he gathered the shattered remains of his composure and tore his eyes from the chakra metal ingot, he asked hoarsely, En Naruto-kun, just where did you find this again? In the second sub-area of training ground 13. Naruto replied, hiding his amusement at the sandame looking so shocked, I killed a massive chakra mutated mole and found this in its burrow. I know it's metal but I have no idea what it is and I thought you would know. The Sandame nodded slowly. It was a good thing that you did, Naruto-kun. Does anyone else know you have this? No. I sealed it as soon as I found it. Naruto replied, it would have been too heavy to carry otherwise. Naturally, naturally, the Hokage muttered, well Naruto-kun, you are in luck. What you have there is unmistakably one of the largest ingots of chakra metal I have ever seen. May I inspect it? Sure. Channeling chakra to his arms, Sarutobi picked up the lump of metal easily and examined it. On the reverse side of the ingot, in the top right-hand corner, was the purity of the metal, which had the old man's eyebrows shooting up in astonishment. A purity of 999.90, he exclaimed, Naruto-kun, this is worth a fortune. Is it? Naruto asked, how much are we talking exactly? You could buy the Hyuga clan compound and still have enough left over to live without working for three years if you sold it, and that is if you get the lowest price for it. A. Naruto yelped in shock. The Hyuga clan compound was almost as large as the old Uchiha compound, which was massive. Yes, it is a rather impressive price tag, isn't it? The Hokage said with a chuckle, I rather imagine, however, that you are far more interested in what can be made from it. Yeah. Naruto agreed fervently, like, is this enough to make two Tonto and a Kodachi? M, I believe so. Sarutobi said thoughtfully, you would have to get a master weaponsmith to tell you for certain. Would Higurashi-san count? The blonde boy asked. Tatsuhiko. Yes, certainly. The Sandame replied with a nod, he is one of the best smiths in all of Hai no Kuni, regardless of his habit of getting drunk when outside of Konoha. He'll be able to tell you either way. Thanks Gigi. Naruto replied as he resealed the ingot, I'm going to see Tenten tomorrow, so I'll see her dad while I'm at it. Oh. Giving up on Sakura-chan to chase after Tenten. Sarutobi teased. Wah. No. Naruto yelled with a flush, Tenten asked me to do something for her and I'm reporting back to her about it. Jeez Gigi. The pout Naruto threw his way made the Hokage chuckle again. Now, how have you been doing in training ground 13 other than finding rare and expensive metals? Okay. The first sub-area was full of mutated squirrels the size of small dogs and the second was full of mutated moles. Naruto replied, weird. I wonder what's in the third sub-area, oh yeah. What do I do with any old weapons and the like that I find in the training ground? If they have their owner's name on or near them, bring them to me and I'll see that they are returned. 
Seru Toby replied, anything else is yours. Finders keepers. Consider it payment for clearing out the areas. It's the usual rule is for those who clear out training grounds full of chakra mutations. Nice. Naruto grinned, well, I gotta go Gigi. Studying time with Sakura-chan. Have a good time, my boy. Seru Tobi smiled as Naruto left, before a frown came upon his face. That large ingot of chakra metal was a daimyo's ransom. Naruto had been telling the truth about where he found it, but Seru Tobi could tell he was being evasive about exactly how it was found, which was troubling. Ordinarily, Naruto would be boasting of every minor detail of his discovery of the ingot. On the bright side, this does mean that he is becoming a better shinobi. The Hokage thought with a sigh, it looks like I'll have to resort to more sneaky methods of finding out what he does though. Ah well, now what was this petition? A proposal to assign guards for the civilian council three shinobi per member on a permanent basis. Did they think we'd just make shinobi appear out of thin air whenever we need them? Denied. The sound of a stamp firmly thumping on paper resounded through the room as Seru Tobi Hirazan did battle with his paperwork. After Sakura's tutoring session streets of Konoha, what to do now? Naruto mused. He had just finished a study session with Sakura, netting him a nice little bonus of int and wis. He had also established taijutsu practice times twice a week. Apparently, Hokage Gigi had been right and her father was going to give her some pointers three times a week, which he encouraged heartily. The thing was, he didn't know what to do with himself now. He didn't want to challenge the third sub-area until he had a proper weapon and he didn't know if he could go back to the other areas he had already cleared. He didn't need to go shopping yet and he wasn't hungry, so he hadn't a clue what to do. Then it hit him. Training time, he declared and beat feet back to his apartment building. Once he got there, he pulled those interesting shinobi sandals out of his inventory and equipped them, reasoning that if they had an effect on training the tree climbing exercise, they were worth a try. Damn, I hate breaking in new sandals, he groused, I get them just how I like them and I have to replace the damn things, well, better get started on the training. Having said that, Naruto didn't know of any trees that were out of sight, meh. Walls would be a good replacement. Thanks to his gamer abilities, Naruto knew that the tree climbing exercise was meant for any surface, from stone walls, to trees, to the sides of a ship. Deciding to give the newly refurbished sparring dojo a try, Naruto headed there and started climbing the walls. He decided to try to level it up to level 5 today. The main thing about training a skill like this, Naruto comes to realize, is that it is mind-numbingly boring. Walking up and down a wall well, walking up a wall and falling down after a certain point got really dull after about 5 minutes, so Naruto created some Iwa Bunshin to do the exercise with him so he'd at least have some company. Unfortunately, his clones were mouthy bastards and started following his Gigi's lead in teasing him about Sakura and Tenten. Naruto was really confused here. Were elemental clones supposed to be this mouthy? He'd have to ask Uruka sensei at some point cause this was starting to freak him out a bit. Finally, tree climbing exercise has leveled up. 4 to 5. Phew. That took way too damn long. Naruto huffed. Let's see now. Tree climbing passive active LV5 209. The tree climbing exercise is one of the first chakra control exercises a fresh genin learns after graduation from the academy. Fulfilling several roles, this training exercise is the forerunner of the more difficult water walking exercise, as well as laying the foundation for the tree jumping skill. Passively increases chakra control by 5%. Passively raises CP by 1%. Actively allows the user to stick to any solid surface that is not a chakra repellent. Costs 15 CP per minute. That's a bit better. The blonde boy huffed, still, I need to do better. I need to get better faster. Better start with the damn calligraphy, damn it. I don't have ink or a brush. Kuso. Shopping time. Running to the nearest shop that sold calligraphy brushes and ink, Naruto once again made use of the ever-useful Henge no Jutsu to become Uruka in order not to get overcharged. He bought enough brushes, paper and ink for a small class, just to avoid people being suspicious, and was surprised when he actually got money off for buying in bulk. Who knew? Down 5,000 Ryo, Naruto headed back to his apartment and started on his practice. The first attempts were, atrocious. Seriously looking more like a child's attempt to draw a zebra than anything else. 
Undaunted, Naruto continued to practice. He had to get to level 10 in calligraphy in order to learn basic fuenjutsu, which would be the first step to honoring his ancestors. Before being told about the Uzumaki clan's skill with fuenjutsu, Naruto had been somewhat ambivalent about learning it. Now that he knew his ancestors had specialized in using the sealing arts, there was nothing on earth that would stop him from learning it. Finally, a connection with those who came before him. Once Naruto reached level 3, he gave up for the day because his hand was sore from grasping the damn brush. He was about to head over to the kitchen and start to make his dinner when a knock came at his door. Frowning, he went over and opened it, revealing. Ino. What do you want? Naruto asked in surprise. Well that's a charming way to greet someone, the Yamanaka heiress huffed with her arms crossed, well. Aren't you going to invite me in? Or are we going to be conversing across the damn doorway? Naruto, knowing that Ino would be at least somewhat polite in someone else's house, opened the door fully to let her in. Ojimashimasu. Ino said as she came in, let's have a seat before we talk. Oh, K. Naruto said with a frown, leading her to the living room. What are you up to Naruto? Ino asked bluntly after sitting on an armchair. You'll have to be a bit more specific than that Ino. Naruto replied dryly. With Sakura, Dobi. Ino snapped. What about Sakura-chan? He asked, absently noting that Ino had dropped her derogatory nickname for Sakura. Why are you doing all of, what you've done? Ino said, stumbling on her words for a moment. Because she and you for that matter are not up to snuff. Naruto stated frankly, you both barely train, which you should be doing, and you both diet, which shinobi do not need to do. I had the ability to help her out and I took it. I like her and do not want to see her dead on her first mission out of the village. Ino scoffed at this. Tisk. Yeah right. What would the dead last know? I have been in the academy for two years more than you, Ino. Naruto told her, his temper starting to fray, the only and I mean the only reason why I haven't graduated before now is because I can't do the stupid bunch and no jutsu. If not for that, I'd have a hit I ate already. Seeing Ino's stubborn expression made him sigh. That damp, strong-minded perk of hers is raising its ugly head here. Then an idea struck him. Look, in two months, have a spar with Sakura-chan. I'll be willing to bet she kicks your ass six ways to Sunday. Naruto said with a smirk. Me. Lose to forehead girl. Tisk. Dream on. Ino scoffed again, alright. I accept the bet. If I beat forehead, you pay for a shopping spree of mine. Why does this seem familiar for some reason? Naruto muttered under his breath, fine. And if Sakura-chan hands you your ass on a platter, you have to stop calling her that stupid nickname. You aren't going to make me stop dieting or train. Ino asked in surprise. Nope, you'll do that all on your own once you get your ass kicked. Naruto grinned. Dream on. Ino rolled her eyes, I'm still going to keep an eye on you, Naruto. Just because forehead and I are rivals for Sasuke-kun's love doesn't mean I'm going to let you hurt her. It always comes back to the tem, doesn't it? Naruto grumbled. Baka. Don't call my Sasuke-kun that. Ino shouted at him. I'll call him whatever the hell I like. Naruto retorted. Now if you don't mind, I have to make my dinner, so go. Tisk. Ino scoffed, whatever. With that, she stormed out and slammed the door, making Naruto wince. He then turned his attention to the quest window that had popped up during the conversation. Quest created. Fields and mountains, train Haruno Sakura to be able to defeat her frenemy and rival Yamanaka Ino in two months' time. Quest completion reward, plus 2000 EXP, plus 500 reputation with Haruno Sakura, plus 500 reputation with Yamanaka Ino, plus 5000 Ryo, Futon, Datapa no Jutsu, Scroll. Quest failure, plus 500 EXP. Minus 250 reputation with Haruno Sakura, a heavy hit to your wallet. Except, why, and yet another quest that he couldn't ignore. The possible rewards made him want to salivate though. That much experience would likely make him level up, and the Ryo wasn't a bad enticement either. The best prize was the Jutsu scroll though. For some reason, Wind Element Jutsu seemed to be rare in Konoha, which fitted in with what Aruka sensei had told me about the number of people who could even use it, let alone those who actually did. Hitting, why, Naruto returned his attention to making his dinner. Cup ramen for the win. 
The next day Taijutsu Arena, Academy Grounds Naruto winced as Akamichi Choji sent a civilian-born student sailing out of the arena with a solid punch. He honestly never wanted to fight Choji because of that physical strength of his. He even used, observe, on him and didn't like what he saw. Name. Akamichi Choji Class. Clan heir of the Akamichi level. 8 next level. 98.68% title. Academy student plus 25% EXP to LB10 age. 12 HP. 650 CP. 650 STR. 22 STA. 22 DEX. 16 INT. 13 WIS. 20. Luck. 17 Special Status. Akamichi Clan Air minus 25% Chakra to use any Akamichi Clan Jutsu, Big Bone plus 2, STR and STA per level. 30% more difficult to increase Dex, Amateur Akamichi Battle Chef plus 25 EXP to all field cooking actions, adds 15% to field cooking success ratio. Perks. Loyal Friend, Physical Resilience Flaws, Touchy Subject. Fat, timid Akamichi Choji is slated to become the 16th head of the Akamichi clan. He is a kind, shy boy who is immensely loyal to those he calls friend. The mention of a certain three-letter word sends him into a blind rage, but is otherwise hard to antagonize. He is rarely seen without his best friend Nara Shikamaru. Naruto had always liked Choji. Granted, the boy ate like food was going out of fashion, but he was never mean to the blonde prankster. Seeing how damn strong Choji was made Naruto eager to keep their friendship. Winner. Akamichi Choji. Uruka, the referee, declared, Kazuya-kun, go to the medical office. I think you might want to get that minor concussion looked at. Choji's opponent staggered off with a slightly dazed look on his face. Ouch. Next up. Uzumaki Naruto vs. Uchiha Sasuke. Uruka said in confusion. Naruto spotted Mizuki hide a smirk and scowled. Obviously, the assistant teacher wanted to make Naruto's life difficult by having him beaten in a spar by the elite, Uchiha-sama. Well screw that. Quest created. Rival showdown. Your spiteful assistant teacher has manipulated things and paired you against Uchiha Sasuke, your rival in the rookie of the year, in the taijutsu sparring session for the nth time. Defeat him. Quest completion reward. Plus 1000 EXP. Random Taijutsu Skill Scroll, minus 100 Reputation with Uchiha Sasuke. Quest Failure. Random Selection between 250 EXP and Random Taijutsu Scroll. Accept. Y, N discreetly tapping. Y, Naruto strode forwards and stood in the middle of the sparring circle. Opposite him, Uchiha Sasuke gazed at him with a contempt look in those black eyes of his as he slouched to the ring. This makes 20 times in a row these two have been matched up. Uruka said icily to Mizuki, I expect that next time, different opponents will be chosen for them. Understood, Mizuki-kun. Mizuki just snorted. All right you two. Please make the Teretsu no in, seal of confrontation. Uruka sighed. Both Naruto and Sasuke made a half ram seal with one hand. Kick his ass, Sasuke-kun. Ino cheered. Rather surprisingly, Sakura didn't join in verbally, but she did cheer for her love interest, which made Naruto sigh inside. His luck sucked when it came to this kind of thing. Observe, he whispered. Name. Uchiha Sasuke Class. Emo Avenger Level. 13 Next Level. 0-12% Title. Academy Student plus 25% EXP to LB10 Age. 12 HP. 750-750th CP. 675-675 STR, 25 STA, 18 DEX, 21 INT, 23 WIS, 15 LUCK, 5 SPECIAL STATUS, UNAWAKENED DOJUTSU, PLUS 1 DEX EVERY OTHER LEVEL, PLUS 1 INT EVERY LEVEL, AVENGER, PLUS BONUS GIVEN TO ALL STATS WHEN AGAINST UCHIHA ITACHI, POWER OF HATRED, BONUS TO ALL PHYSICAL STATS GIVEN AGAINST ALL TARGETS THE USER HATES, LAST UCHIHA, AUTOMATICALLY COUNTS AS THE UCHIHA CLAN heir EVEN IF NOT OF THE MAIN FAMILY, GRANTING PLUS 10% DAMAGE TO ALL UCHIHA JUTSU WITH MINUS 25% CHAKRA COST. PERKS. NATURAL GENIUS. HARD WORKING. DETERMINED FLAWS. EMO McBrody PANTS. Hatred, Uchiha Itachi, Lone Wolf. Superiority Complex, Inferiority Complex. Knowing pain Uchiha Sasuke is the last living member of the once feared Uchiha clan aside from his brother, 
Uchiha Itachi, the clan killer, who slaughtered all of his clan aside from Sasuke. Driven by hatred and a thirst for vengeance, there is nothing he will not do in exchange for the power to slay his brother. Yet, deep inside him, there is still the good person he was before the Uchiha massacre. Sasuke was definitely superior to any of his classmates at level 13 no less. Yet, with the most flaws Naruto had seen on one person, he was also the most unbalanced. Unbalanced or not, he's still way over my current skill level. Naruto thought with a frown, I'll have to play this carefully. The Tem is a bastard, but he's skilled. I know that better than most. Being beaten like an unwanted stepchild for 20 sparring matches in a row will do that to a person. On my signal, Baruka raised one hand before bringing it down, Hajime. Naruto, usually the one to charge, decided to let the Uchiha make the first move this time. Assuming a basic defensive stance, Naruto waited for his opponent to react. Sasuke raised a mental eyebrow at the Dobi acting cautiously for a change before he appraised the blonde boy's stance. It was actually quite good. A bit sloppy in places, but miles better than his previous attempts. So the Dobi has actually started making an effort, he thought with a smirk. He might actually get a workout out of this spar for a change. Leaping across the ring, Sasuke shot a high kick out at Naruto's head, which was blocked. Spinning away, the Uchiha followed up with a four-punch combo. Naruto managed to doze the first two, but the third hit his cheek, sending him stumbling back. Rallying, Naruto flung out a backhand that Sasuke grabbed and tried to use to throw him. Hooking a foot around his opponent's leg, Naruto quickly pulled, breaking Sasuke's stance, forcing him to let go of his arm and leaving the last Uchiha open to a roundhouse kick that sent him flying. He managed to stop himself from exiting the arena, but a look of slight shock was on his face. Naruto had actually fought back successfully for the first time against him. A smirk flashed over Sasuke's face for a second before he charged back at Naruto with a determined expression on his face. Leaping into the air, the Uchiha executed an axe drop kick on Naruto, who blocked it by crossing his arms. Using that as a springboard, Sasuke leaped over him and drove an elbow into his opponent's back as soon as he landed. Grunting in pain, Naruto lurched forward from the elbow strike. Before he could recover, Sasuke executed a low kick that sent Naruto sprawling on the ground. The match is over. Victor, Uchiha Sasuke. Uruka declared, good effort Naruto. You've been practicing hard, I see. Yup. Naruto grinned as he got up. Not enough though, damn it. Quest failed. Rival showdown. You fought valiantly, but Uchiha Sasuke still defeated you. Quest failure compensation. Chakra strength enhancement, skill scroll. Secret achievement unlocked. Worthy rival. Fight well but lose to Uchiha Sasuke during a spar. Plus 100 reputation with Uchiha Sasuke. Beginner's Hakage Taijutsu has leveled up. LV6 LV8. HN. Sasuke grunted. All right you two, make the Wakai no in seal of reconciliation, the scarred Chunin directed the two students. With the two fingers of their right hands, Naruto and Sasuke shook hands quickly then swiftly let go. Dobi. Tem. As Naruto walked back out of the ring to let the next match start, he mused at his Taijutsu jumping up by two levels. Was it because Sasuke was so skilled in Taijutsu or because he was about 5 levels higher than he was? Whichever it is, I'll need to ask Gigi about training dummies at some point. Naruto thought as Sakura fought against Katsuragi Amy, the class bully, barely pulling out a win against her. After the academy. Sakura-chan. Naruto called as the kids started leaving the academy. What is it Naruto? Sakura no longer appended the Baka. To his name anymore, which was a huge improvement to Naruto's perspective. I'm gonna be busy today, so we can't have our study session today. He told her apologetically. He was going to go to Higurashi so they could tell him if his Tonto and Kodachi could be made from the ingot of chakra metal he had, and he had a feeling it would take a while when combined with completing the quest, a broken blade can still cut, so he was taking the day off from attacking books. You better have a good excuse Naruto. Sakura growled. I have to go see a smith about a sword. He replied, and it might take a while. Shouldn't you wait until after you graduate before getting weapons? Sakura asked with one delicate eyebrow raised. It takes weeks, sometimes months, to forge a good blade, Sakura-chan. 
Naruto told her, I will graduate this time round and I'm gonna be fully equipped when I do. You might wanna give some thought to your own equipment once you've graduated. Noted. Sakura aside, well, see you tomorrow Naruto. See ya, Sakura-chan. Naruto grinned. That was the first time she'd said something like that to him. Score. Stopping by his apartment to grab the scroll containing the ingot he had forgotten to put it back in his inventory yesterday, Naruto set out for the weapons shop. On the way, he noted several shinobi looking at him in an odd way. It wasn't malicious or threatening, rather, it was more like they were curious about him. For making an accurate deduction, you gain plus one whis. Shush. Naruto grumbled. He was really getting tired of his own damn ability mocking him. Naruto. A familiar voice called out to him. The boy turned to see Uruka jogging towards him and Naruto grinned. Hey there Uruka sensei. What's up? Hokage sama told me about what you found in training ground 13. The Chunin sensei replied quietly. He also told me you'd be going to Higurashi's to see if it could make the weapons you want, so I decided to come along with you to make sure no one tries to steal it from you. Thanks Uruka sensei Naruto was grateful for this. He doubted that anyone other than the Hokage, himself and Uruka sensei knew about the chakra metal ingot, but better safe than sorry. As they walked along, Uruka congratulated him on doing so well against Sasuke. You've been practicing hard, the scarred man said with a smile. Naruto chuckled and grinned proudly. You know it. Then he frowned. Thing is, I can only do so much just practicing Keita. What should I do? You could try sparring with your Iwa Bunshin. Uruka pointed out. Face palming, the blonde boy muttered, why the hell didn't I think of that? To be fair, it isn't something most people think of. Uruka said with a small smile, while more robust than most clone jutsu, Iwa Bunshin are still very fragile compared with a flesh and blood opponent, and most shunin level shinobi can easily defeat one. For academy students and genin though, it ought to be good practice. Thanks for the tip, Uruka sensei. Naruto said as they came upon the Higurashi weapons shop. As seemed to be usual for when Naruto turned up, Tenten was sitting behind the counter polishing a weapon, this time a Nodashi. Hey Naruto, Uruka sensei Tenten greeted them, whatcha need? Did Isaka-san come in two days ago? Naruto asked nervously. Yup. The bun-haired girl nodded with a small scowl, she told me everything about how my baby was broken. Oh, Kawashima is in for one hell of a lecture when I see her next. Someone broke one of your weapons, Tenten. Uruka asked, wincing as the steely eyes of the girl locked on him and the kunoichi nodded once, yeesh. I kind of feel sorry for her. And angry that she broke a masterpiece of a weapon. The last part was added rather quickly as Tenten narrowed her eyes at her former teacher dangerously. Naruto was rather thankful he was on her good side. Anyway, Tenten said, abruptly reverting to her previous good mood, as thanks for helping me out, Kasan and Oyaji said they're giving you a small discount on anything inside the shop whenever you come here. It isn't much, but I hope it's alright as thanks. Th thanks. Naruto replied in shock. He'd never gotten a permanent discount at any shop before. Quest completed. A broken blade can still cut. You have helped defuse and resolve the matter of the destruction of the Tonto Toradora. Quest completion reward. Plus 1000 reputation with Higurashi Tenten. 5% discount when shopping at Higurashi Weapons and Ninja Apparels. Plus 750 reputation with Higurashi Kanae. Plus 750 reputation with Higurashi Tatsuhiko. Plus 1000 reputation with Higurashi Weapons and Ninja Apparels. Not bad. That puts me just 500 reputation from moving from friendly to well liked with Tenten. Naruto thought as he drew the ingot scroll out of his pocket. Are your parents around? I have something they might want to see. He told her. Another weapon? Tenten asked curiously. No. You'll see soon though. Naruto grinned foxily. Eyeing Naruto suspiciously, Tenten headed off to get her parents. I'm looking forward to how she'll react to this. Naruto whispered to Uruka. You are such a prankster, Naruto. Uruka said with mock sternness, a glint in his eyes showing that he too was looking forward to the weapon crazy girl's reaction to this. Meh. If you've got it, Naruto shrugged. Ah, Uzumaki-san. Tatsuhiko called as he led the way back into the room, what is it that you need me to see? Naruto gulped as Tatsuhiko loomed over him. Man, he was big. 
Behind him, Kanae rolled her eyes at her husband's antics and smacked the back of his head sharply with one hand. Anata, he's here to show us something, not ask for our daughter's hand in marriage, so stop your shenanigans. Ka San. Tenten whined in embarrassment, a light dusting of pink appearing on her cheeks. Was there really a need to smack me over the head? The man of the house grumbled, domestic abuse, this is. A big strong man like you, bullied by a small and delicate thing like me. Surely not. Kanae teased, making Naruto and Aruka snicker at the larger man's discomfort. Women. Well, you two clowns can laugh it up all you want, but you'll be on this side of the fence one day. The weaponsmith grumbled, then you'll regret not showing sympathy to me, mark my words. Anyway, what is it you would like to show my wife and me, Uzumaki-san? This. Naruto said as he unrolled the storage scroll and unsealed the ingot of chakra metal, anticipating the reactions of the family of smiths. He wasn't disappointed. Tenten took one look at the metal and almost fainted. Her parents were more restrained, but their eyes bulging out and slightly agape expressions were priceless. Ch chakra metal, Kanae croaked out, how, where? I killed a huge chakra mutated mole and found this in its burrow. Naruto shrugged. This, it has to be highly purified. Tatsuhiko murmured, touching the ingot with a trembling finger. There's a stamp on the back that says it's 990.90 pure, is that good? Naruto asked. That's, just about as pure as you can get with chakra metal. The smith gulped, I take it you wish me to forge a weapon for you. First, can you forge a Kodachi and a pair of Tonto from that ingot? Naruto inquired. With this much chakra metal, I could make three full-sized katana, so yes. Tatsuhiko replied. What will you do with the leftover metal? Kanae asked. Well, I doubt that having you make the blades will be cheap, right? Naruto asked. It will cost thousands of Ryo. The smith confirmed, it will still be cheaper than it would otherwise be because you are supplying a large amount of the materials. Then you can have the rest of the metal as payment. Naruto said with a shrug. There was a gasp from Tenten at that. Naruto, that's. Are you certain? Tatsuhiko asked, selling the remaining metal to a merchant would more than pay for your weapons and leave you a comfortable nest egg for emergencies. Thanks to his ability converting defeated enemies into money, Naruto didn't really need a nest egg, but it was best to not let anyone know about that part just yet. It's okay. I have a lot saved up. Naruto drew out Gama-chan, which was literally stuffed full of Ryo notes, to the point of looking like a balloon. Besides, better to have it on hand in Konoha than Kami-sama knows where if you need the metal. A point. Tatsuhiko gave a grin, alright, Uzumaki-san. I shall make your weapons with all of my skill. This I do so swear. Would you prefer the Kodachi made first or the Tonto? Air, what'll be quicker? Naruto asked. Making a pair of Tonto is fairly simple. If you pick the same blade design, I can have them ready for you by next month. The smith replied. Huh. Tenten, recovered from her shock, explained, there are different designs of blades for Tonto. Here, take a look at this display over here. She pointed at the rack next to the counter, which had 12 different Tonto mounted on it, all unsheathed. They all looked very impressive. I, don't know. What would you recommend? Naruto asked, feeling a bit out of his depth. As you're just starting out with him, I'd recommend a pair of Hira blades. Tatsuhiko mused, they're one of the more common designs for Tonto. Hira is the one at the top, the plain one. The design was indeed plain, but it looked deadly nonetheless. Sounds good. Naruto decided, I'll leave it with you then. Air, do you sell practice versions? Sure. Kanae said, Ten Chan, go and get two of the Hira variant practice blades from the back. Grab a Kodachi one as well. Hi, Ka San. The bun haired Kunoichi replied as she dashed off to fetch the requested items. That will be 7,500 Ryo. Kanae said with a professional smile. Fishing out the cash from Gama Chan, Naruto handed the notes over to Kanae, who nodded her thanks. Here you go Naruto. Tenten said as she handed over a pair of dull and blunt Tonto and an equally blunt Kodachi. These simulate the weight and balance of the real thing, so you can use them to get used to wielding them. I made all of them, so they're all of good quality and can take a beating. Just don't break them, k? Not in a million years. Naruto agreed hurriedly as he sealed the practice weapons into the scroll. The last thing he wanted was an experienced genin out for his blood. Speaking of which, aspiring weapons mistress. 
LB20 Higurashi Tenton Master Blacksmith LB17 Higurashi Tatsuhiko Assistant Blacksmith LB15 Higurashi Kanae Tenton was very high level for someone who had only been a genin for a year, so either she had killed some powerful opponents or she had been doing some insane training. Possibly both. Even her parents were. He noted as he and Uruka bid the three Higurashis goodbye, above the usual level he had seen for civilians. Uruka sensei had mentioned that they were retired shinobi, so shouldn't their levels be higher than that? Or did retiring from a profession to take up another reset your levels somehow? Naruto. Uruka asked in concern. The usually rambunctious boy had been quiet ever since they had left the weapon shop. It was slightly unnerving. Quote question mark. Oh, sorry. Naruto said as he snapped himself out of his pondering, I was just wondering where I'm going to get a Nito Ryu Tanto style and a Kodachi style. Does the shinobi section of the library have anything like that? Highly likely. I'll have a look for you. The Chunin sensei promised, which reminds me. I completely forgot to train you in another clone jutsu that I was supposed to. Up for a lesson. Hell yeah. Naruto cheered. Dojo room, a mechage apartments, now then Naruto, Uruka began in his, lecturing, voice, the jutsu I am going to show you is highly advanced, well beyond the basic bunshin no jutsu and the Iwa bunshin. It is called the cage bunshin no jutsu. Does it have anything to do with the Nara clan? Naruto asked cautiously. Good guess, but no. Uruka chuckled. Everyone thought the Nara had something to do with the shadow clone jutsu at first. No, the cage bunshin no jutsu was invented by the Nadaim Hokage, Senju Tobarama. It creates a physical copy of the user using only chakra. No elemental medium whatsoever. Naruto frowned. His studies with Sakura-chan had only briefly touched on the theory of chakra control, but he did know one thing. That means the chakra cost is through the roof, isn't it? Uruka nodded. Exactly. The general rule is that creating a shadow clone uses about half of a Jonin level shinobi's chakra reserves, but that is just a guideline. Nevertheless, the cage bunshin no jutsu is classed as a kinjutsu, so if you learn it, you are not permitted to knowingly teach it to someone with insufficient reserves. Understood. Naruto nodded. Hi, sensei. Good. Now, unlike other clone jutsu, you only use a single hand sign in order to use the shadow clone jutsu and it is called the clone hand sign. Uruka said. Catching the look on Naruto's face, he added, hey, I didn't name the hand sign. Blame Nadaim sama for that. Sure, sure. Naruto rolled his eyes. This is the clone hand sign. Uruka continued after glaring at Naruto for a moment. He formed a cross in front of himself using the index and middle fingers of both hands. The shadow clone jutsu doesn't require much in the way of chakra control. In fact, the more chakra you have, the better. Uruka continued, ordinarily, I would advise experimenting to see how much chakra it takes to form a single clone, but given that you have so much chakra, you should just keep trying until you can form any number of clones. Okay. Naruto cracked his knuckles, and then formed the same hand sign as Uruka, cage bunshin no jutsu. A blast of smoke filled the room, making both of them cough. Once the smoke dissipated, a faint outline of a Naruto clone flickered and vanished. Uh huh, well that's odd. Uruka remarked and unrolled a scroll, I'd better check the jutsu scroll, ah, here we are, in the event that the room fills with smoke upon execution of the technique, attempt to create as many clones as you can rather than one or three as it is clear that either your chakra control sucks or you are being lazy, very blunt, Nadaim sama. Wait, is that? Naruto asked in surprise. A copy of Senju Tobarama's original scrolls regarding the cage bunshin no jutsu, copied by the Sandame Hokage himself. Uruka replied, he copied it out especially for the sake of teaching you this jutsu, so work hard. Yosha. Let's try this again. Naruto declared, cage bunshin no jutsu. It took Naruto four hours to finally produce a proper shadow clone. Rather, it took him four hours to become a one-boy army. When he finally succeeded, 24 clones materialized in an explosion of chakra smoke. Naruto fell to one knee at that point, noting absently in his exhaustion that his CP was down to zero out of 900. Geez, that was exhausting. Skill created. As a result of specific repeated actions, the skill cage bunshin no jutsu has been created. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu Instant LV1, 0 
The Nadaim Hokage's shadow clone Jutsu is one of his most widely known Jutsu and was originally created for scouting dangerous locations. All clones possess the same physical capabilities as the original, are equipped as the original and can also use any Jutsu known to the original. The downsides to this technique are twofold. First, it is very chakra intensive, meaning only the more powerful Hai Chunin and Janin can make use of this technique. Secondly, it only takes a single solid hit to dispel the clone, making it impractical as a genuine combat technique. Owing to your exceptionally dense chakra as in Uzumaki, the CP cost of each clone is reduced by 75%. Initial cost for each shadow clone, 150 CP adjusted cost for each shadow clone, 37.5 CP, I comma I did it. Naruto cheered. I'll say. Uruka muttered in disbelief, 24 shadow clones. Shaking his head, Uruka looked at a rapidly recovering and energetic Naruto with a fond smile. Kanaha's number one show off, number one unpredictable noisy ninja, that title definitely fits you Naruto, he thought before offering to take Naruto out for ramen at Ikirakus to celebrate. Three guesses what Naruto's reply was. Chapter 9. Random encounter early morning, the next day Naruto's apartment Naruto had a look at his stats as he ate his breakfast. Name. Uzumaki Naruto class, the gamer. Level. 7 next level. 19.89% title, academy student plus 25% exp to lb10 age, 12 hp, 900 900 cp, 900 900 str, 18 minus 5 sta, 38 minus 5, plus 1 oh, dex, 19 minus 5 int, 19 plus 5 wis, 20 luck. Looking at his stats, Naruto felt a headache coming on. His stats had gone up by quite a bit compared with when he had first looked at them, but his stamina was still far and above the highest, while his strength stat had gone up by only 7. Hadn't he meant to do something about that? Wait a minute, gah. I knew I was forgetting something, the blonde orphan exclaimed. He ran into his bedroom and frantically searched through his clothes before finally finding what he was looking for. The training waits, he declared as he found the box he had bought at Higurashi's the first time. He opened up the lid and saw instructions. Thank you for purchasing the Higurashi Special Training Weights copyright, Naruto read out loud, in order to use these weights to their full potential, please ensure that you wear all four simultaneously to ensure equal training on all four limbs. Already knew that, once you place the training weights on, make the rat hand sign, channel chakra into the weights and call out a number from 1 to 5. This sets the weight to predetermined settings for your convenience. Newcomers are recommended to start on level 1 and build up to level 2 gradually. Okay, sounds simple, in order to turn the weights off, make the rat hand sign once again and say, Kai. This will deactivate the weights immediately. Should it not, please bring them to the store for removal and a full refund. Naruto slid one on each of his arms and legs, then made the rat hand sign. 1. He immediately felt like someone had attached lead weights to his arms and legs. Not heavy ones, but very obviously there. You have been affected by the status effect, lesser weighted gravity. An idea occurred to him and he opened up his, status, screen and put the 5 points from the last level up into STR, making it 23, which helped enlightening the load a bit. Naruto walked around to try to get a feel for how hard it was to move with the weights on. Surprisingly, it was rather manageable, although he was slowed down somewhat. What now? He mused aloud as he sat back down and finished off his breakfast, a bowl of rice and miso soup. The academy wasn't on for the next couple of days, so what to do? Oh. I could train the jutsu Uruka sensei taught me yesterday, he thought brightly, a smirk on his face as he recalled the trip to Ikirakus that had shown a new light on the cage bunch and no jutsu and his gamer power. Flashback. A. A training aid. Naruto asked in surprise as he and Uruka sensei were waiting for their ramen to be served. Yes. The scarred Chunin nodded, originally, the shadow clone Jutsu was created for scouting purposes. How do you think the clones tell their creator information if only one hit dispels them? Ah, uh, really good life insurance. Naruto joked. Nice one, but no. Uruka replied with a grin, when you create a regular bunshin, you're just creating an illusion that mimics your shape and appearance. When you create an elemental bunshin, like your Iwa bunshin, you're basically forcing chakra into a physical object and shaping it, again, to become a facsimile of you. 
Shadow clones are entirely made of chakra, to the point that they copy your chakra network and brain as well. In addition, there is a link between the clones and the creator, so when a cage bunshin dies, the creator receives a portion of the chakra used to create the back, as well as an entire copy of the clone's memories from the moment it was created to the moment it was destroyed. Naruto gaped at Uruka for a moment. None of that was on the information his gamer power had provided for him. Activating, auto update, system, working, working, done. From this point on, any information that gamer learns about any jutsu or skill they possess not already in the basic description provided by that skill window will automatically be added in. Should that information increase the chakra cost of the jutsu, that will automatically be adjusted as well. That, sound pretty awesome, Uruka sensei Naruto said, inwardly gaping at the recent update to his ability. This would rock. It is rather. Uruka agreed, but it is also dangerous. The information overload of as many clones as you made just now could overload your brain, knock you out and possibly cause brain damage if you receive them all at once. Try to only dispel three at a time if you can help it, okay? Sure thing. Naruto nodded. Oh boy, here comes my ramen. Flashback and Naruto opened up his skill window and then the window for the cage bunch and no jutsu. Cage bunch and no jutsu instant LV1, 0 hundred. The Nadaim Hokage's Shadow Clone Jutsu is one of his most widely known jutsu and was originally created for scouting dangerous locations. All clones possess the same physical capabilities as the original, are equipped as the original and can also use any jutsu known to the original. All memories of the clones are transferred to the user upon their destruction, as well as a tithe of the chakra used to create them. The downsides to this technique are twofold. First, it is very chakra intensive, meaning only the more powerful Hai Chunin and Janin can make use of this technique. Secondly, it only takes a single solid hit to dispel the clone, making it impractical as a genuine combat technique. Owing to your exceptionally dense chakra as an Uzumaki, the CP cost of each clone is reduced by 75%. Additionally, you receive 10% of the chakra from each clone once it is destroyed. Hand sign. Clone hand sign. Initial cost for each shadow clone. 400 CP adjusted cost for each shadow clone. 100 CP chakra recovered after clone destruction, per clone 10 CP. Holy crap. Naruto gaped. Now I can only make 9 of them. This sucks. I need to learn chakra control. The only skill he had to do with that was the tree climbing exercise skill, but that didn't actually apply the chakra control to his chakra from what he recalled. So, a chakra control skill. Ah, how the heck do I make a skill like that? Naruto shouted, tugging at his hair with both hands, forget it. I'll practice with my Kodachi and Tonto. Thank Kami Tenten sold me these things. Heading to the dojo room, Naruto grabbed his practice weapons and examined them with, observe. Tenten's well-crafted practice Kodachi, practice weapon made by Higurashi Tenten, a kunoichi, this weapon has perfect balance and simulates the weight of a standard Kodachi perfectly. While not intended for actual combat, as the blade and point are blunt, this weapon can be used to protect yourself. Durability. 60 60 its bludgeoning damage. STR plus 15 10's well-crafted practice Tonto practice weapon pair made by Higurashi Tenten, Akunoichi, these weapons have perfect balance and simulate the weight of a standard Hira blade Tonto perfectly. While not intended for actual combat, as the edges and points are blunt, these weapons can be used to protect yourself. Durability. 45 45 bludgeoning damage. STR plus 5. Man, Tenten has awesome skills to make these, he muttered incredulously. Deciding that as he would be getting his Tonto first, he would train with the two practice Tonto first as well. Putting the Kodachi to one side, Naruto held the practice Tonto in his hands as if to test their weight. Not as heavy as I'd been expecting. He muttered. Now then, how does someone fight with two blades? He tried out a variety of arm positions, but none felt right. In the end, he held both in a reversed grip and it finally felt something like correct. Creating some Iwa Bunshin, Naruto sparred against them, finding that he was learning how to be comfortable with their weight in his hands as well as how best to swing and stab with the Tonto. Eventually. As a result of repeated actions, the skill, self-taught Nito Ryu Tanto Kenjutsu, has been created. Self-taught Nito Ryu Tanto Kenjutsu, level 1, 
0100 active and passive Nido Ryu is the art of using a sword in both hands in order to fight. It is an aggressive style, relying on speed and dexterity to dodge the attacks of the enemy. Most people use set styles to fight with, but you have created your own. At the very least, it will stop you from cutting yourself while you wield your weapons. In addition, Tonto are designed to be used in very close proximity with the enemy, requiring highly advanced dodging and evasion skills to remain unharmed. Passively increases STR by 1%. Passively increases DEX by 2%. Actively increases damage with Tonto type weapons by 3%. Nice. Naruto grinned. Oh, feel the burn. STR has gone up by 1. That was quick. Man, these things are effective. Naruto grinned again. Dunno why more people don't use these. Why oh 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 you 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 t t t t h h h h. Naruto cocked his head to one side as he could have sworn that he heard someone shouting even more obnoxiously than he ever had. Shrugging, he returned to his training, this time taking up the Kodachi. Shorter than a katana, but longer than a wakazashi, Kodachi were seen as difficult to use, Naruto knew, thanks to Uruka sensei's lecture the previous day regarding his chosen weapons. Kodachi were viewed with slight scorn and were seen entirely as a defensive weapon, earning it the name of the, shield sword, to those who practiced swordplay. However, Uruka sensei had gone on to say, that was precisely why using it to attack with would be effective, as nobody would expect Naruto to do more than bite time while wielding his Kodachi. Acting in an unexpected manner was what Naruto did best, after all. After some training, during which he learned that being hit by the sword bouncing off the walls and onto his ankle was very, very painful, the gamer came through for him once more. Self-taught Kodachi Kenjutsu, level 1, 0 hundred passive and active. Kenjutsu, the art of the sword for the purpose of battle, is an ancient art dating back centuries. Most people use a formal style, but you have created your own. At the very least, you will not cut your foot off while wielding your sword. Kodachi are defense-oriented weapons, so you gain plus one int while wielding a Kodachi to reflect the superior defenses you possess. Passively increases STR by 2%. Passively increases DEX by 2%. Actively increases damage dealt by Kodachi type weapons by 5%. Why do all of them imply that I'm clumsy? Naruto growled. Seriously, every, self-taught, style he came up with made it sound like he had two left feet and was drunk as a lord on top of it all. Whatever. He muttered and destroyed his protesting Iwa Bunshin with his Kodachi. Time to work on his calligraphy. After he cleaned and stored his practice weapons, Naruto trotted back up to his rooms and settled down to start working when an idea occurred to him. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, he commanded after he made the clone hand sign. Four clones appeared in an explosion of chakra smoke and his CP dropped by almost half. Right, let's get practicing, he ordered. Right, his clones echoed back at him and went to get some extra calligraphy supplies from his stock. It was a surprised Uruka who came and walked in on five Naruto clones working feverishly at his calligraphy. The scarred Chunin just looked for a minute as Naruto, one of them anyway, looked up and saw him. Ah. Uruka sensei, the Naruto declared. Hey there. Uruka greeted the group in amusement, which of you is the original Naruto? That'd be me, all of them declared at once, before they glared at each other. Who's the original? I am, damn you, one Naruto declared. Like hell. I am, another retorted. Oh now it's on. Much to Uruka's amusement, the five Naruto's then got into a fist fight, ending with four of them vanishing, leaving the original looking irritated. Damn mouthy clones. He muttered, are they supposed to do that? Act all mouthy and everything. It depends on the amount of chakra you put in them. Uruka replied with a chuckle, unlike elemental clones, which have a fixed amount of chakra that they need to be created, as well as a limit to how much each clone can have before the material becomes full to bursting and collapses, shadow clones become a closer copy of the original as more chakra is spent on them, meaning they can even have personalities and be capable of independent thought if you invest enough chakra into them. Huh, Naruto looked thoughtful at this. Anyway, what's with the calligraphy, the Chunin sensei asked. Oh, it's so I can start learning Fuenjutsu. Naruto said with a grin, I found out that the Uzumaki clan was famous for their ability to use seals, so I thought I'd learn it too. So you decided on learning calligraphy. Smart. Uruka said, let's see, huh. 
Not bad. A little more and you'll be ready to try your hand at basic storage scrolls. Yada. Naruto cheered, before remembering something. Oh yeah, did you need? Am I not allowed to visit one of my students? Haruka feigned hurt. Ah. No, that's not it. Naruto denied quickly. Just having you on Naruto. Haruka ruffled the boy's hair. I came to see how you were doing. Just training. Naruto shrugged. It isn't like I have anything better to do. Haruka nodded sympathetically. I see. Why don't you go to the library and borrow some books? The old lady at the library won't let me in. Naruto said glumly, and you need a library card to borrow anything, so I can't just henge into someone to borrow some. You sound like you've done that before. Haruka observed. When I went to get calligraphy supplies, I henge it into you. Naruto muttered. That's odd. Haruka frowned. That did explain why the owner of the shop was surprised by him buying more, but, there should be anti-genjutsu seals at the entrance to each store. No one should be able to enter them without the henge collapsing. Naruto blinked at this. That meant, oh, his henge wasn't just an illusion, it was solid. He'd forgotten about that. Maybe the seals need checked, he said with a shrug. Maybe. Haruka wasn't convinced, but he let it go. If Naruto had to use the transformation jutsu just to buy basic supplies, then there was no point scolding him for it. Perhaps a word with the Hokage was in order though. Naruto had obviously gotten so used to this kind of treatment that it was no longer something he noticed anymore. I'll have a word with Hokage-sama about the librarian. He said instead, that attitude isn't one that someone in charge of the civilian side of the library should have. The Kanahagakur library was divided into two levels. One had the civilian library, with basic reading from fiction to non-fiction, as well as many copies of the Academy 3 Jutsu for those who wished to study them. The other was the Shinobi section, which held copies of non-clan ninjutsu, taijutsu, kenjutsu and genjutsu. A lot of them came from the archives of the Uchiha clan after they were massacred, from various enemy shinobi they had used their Sharingan on. The only way into the library was from a staircase guarded by two chunin and it led down under the civilian library. Naruto would be graduating in a few months time and having access to the library was vital for both before and after the graduation. Okay. Naruto nodded. In the meantime, why don't you go and investigate the next area of training field 13? The scarred Chunin suggested. I get the feeling that the chakra mutations are stronger there, so I'm planning on waiting until I get my Tonto before trying there. Naruto replied seriously. Caution. From Naruto. He's matured. Uruka thought proudly. A couple of months ago, Naruto would have gotten himself into trouble by running headfirst into danger without a second thought. In that case, scour the areas you've already cleared for weapons and the like. He suggested, you found Toradora in one of the areas by happenstance, right? Now that you've eliminated the mutants in the first two areas, you can search to your heart's content for any kanai, shuriken and the like that might be there. I doubt you'll be lucky enough to find another regular weapon, but you never know. Awesome. I never thought about it like that. Naruto exclaimed, thanks Aruka sensei No problem Naruto. Haruka replied, no problem at all. Later sub area 1, training field 13 Naruto was quite pleased with himself. Thanks to his use of shadow clones, he had reached level 7 in calligraphy already, in addition to creating self-taught Nito Ryu Tanto Kenjutsu and self-taught Kodachi Kenjutsu. His cage Bunshin no Jutsu had even leveled up once he beat the crap out of the four clones and dispelled them. If Naruto was any judge, with shadow clones, the longer they existed, the more experience he gained in the skill. He had no idea exactly how much EXP was made per minute or hour, but it had been enough to get his level 1 skill up to level 2. Maybe the 20 odd clones that he made yesterday had something to do with it. So creating and maintaining the clone, the clone dispersing and the chakra and memory return function all had something to do with how much experience Cage Bunshin no Jutsu received. Sounds like a theory. Still, what the heck, he muttered as he looked around the sub-area. It looked exactly the same as before, except, less intimidating. There wasn't that odd sensation that made the hair on the back of his neck stand up. Observe has leveled up. Ignoring that his, observe, skill had leveled up to level 9, Naruto made several Iwa Bunshin and equipped them with Gansetsuken. Okay you guys, he called out to them, spread out and find any weapons, chests or whatever looks like it doesn't belong here. 
Shout out if you find something. Got it, boss, the clones chorus back at him. At least Iwa Bunshin don't talk back if you give them orders. Naruto thought in relief. For the next few minutes, all was well. Occasionally, a clone discovered a shuriken or a kanai and they were placed in Naruto's inventory. Then, warning. Random encounter initiated. What the, whoa. Naruto exclaimed as the scenery around him blurred and he was in the middle of the sub-area, where he had fought the berserk fox squirrel. He was accompanied by his confused and bewildered Iwa Bunshin in short order. In areas not full of chakra mutations, the random encounter system is active. This can go off at any time and will drag you and any members of your party, including clones, into the random encounter zone, which you may only leave if you either defeat the enemy or use the escape skill. Have fun. I'll show you, have fun, you. Naruto muttered, but got distracted by a puppet appearing in front. It was about his height and had no face. It didn't look like a marionette or a bunraku puppet, what the heck was it? Possessed Mokujin, level 8 a tree that has been possessed by a lingering evil chakra, it has transformed into a Mokujin and will relentlessly attack any who go near it. Probably the residual chakra of the Kyubi no Kitsune from the field boss. Naruto though darkly. Leaving the chakra out here was a bad idea. He should have done something before, and now there was a possessed tree on his case. Time to fell this tree, he declared, attack. With a roar, his Iwa Bunshin squad charged the possessed Mokujin, which chattered a series of wooden clicks before counter-charging, very slowly. Naruto stayed at the back and lent support to his Iwa Bunshin with his Hiko Yoshin Shurikenjutsu, and occasionally his Futon, Kaden Shuriken no Jutsu, as well. The Mokujin was slow, but had a ridiculously high defense. The Gansetsuken couldn't cut it and the punches were about as effective as bad language against it. Ditto for the Kanai and Shuriken. Use Doden. Dongan no Jutsu, on it. Naruto ordered. That was the heaviest hitting Jutsu in his repertoire and this thing was slow enough that it had a good chance of being crushed by the rock missile. Two Iwa Bunshin fell back and made the two hand signs that were for the Earth Jutsu before slamming their hands on the ground before them and calling out, Doden, Dongan no Jutsu. Two large men here erupted from the ground and sailed through the air to smash into the Mokujin with the sound of splitting and splintering wood. The two Iwa Bunshin crumbled into dust as they had used the last of their chakra. Possessed Mokujin, defeated. You gain 125 EXP. Phew, Naruto had to wipe his brow at the defeat of the Mokujin. He wandered up as the body crumbled away, revealing, a Bakudo. Naruto had to blurt out. It was indeed a wooden sword, designed for training with swords. He, observed, it. High quality Bakan, training weapon a wooden sword, carved from wood to train in swordplay. Sturdy as it is, it is not really meant for combat situations outside of Randori, but in an emergency situation, it can be turned to a weapon of last resort for self-defense. Bludgeoning damage. S plus 1 0. Huh, not bad. Naruto commented as he deposited it in his inventory. He then found himself standing back where he had been before the random encounter, which was more disorientating than a sight along Shunshin. In the next half hour, he got dragged into three more fights with possessed Mokujin, and came away with another, high-quality Bakan, a wooden charm, that added one to his stamina, not that he needed it, and a pair of wooden gourds. The last one was confusing, until he realized that if he could find a cork stopped, he had a pair of homemade water bottles, which would save him a bit of money, now, where to find corks. The constant use of the, Doden, Dongan no Jutsu, had leveled it up to level 3, just as the constant use of Doden Ninjutsu had leveled up his secondary earth affinity, and Doden, Iwa Bunshin no Jutsu, as well. The haul from the weapons search had yielded 10 kanai, 9 of which were good enough to be added to his stores, 12 shuriken, all of which were in good condition, and 1 chest. Upon opening that chest, Naruto discovered his scroll for a Fuenjutsu. Fuenjutsu. Kiji Boe, he read off of the window that appeared, sealing Jutsu, cloth defense. What the heck, meh, I can't use it yet, so into my inventory it goes. As he did so, he was dragged into yet another random encounter. Offer, what now? Naruto exclaimed as he and his replenished Iwa Bunshin, replacing them was a pain faced against what had to be a supersized Mokujin, it was twice the height and breadth of Choji's dad. Possessed elder Mokujin, level 12 a tree that was over a hundred years old was infected with an evil chakra, turning it into an elder Mokujin. 
Its strength is far greater than that of the regular Mokujin. Dongan Barrage, now. Naruto ordered hurriedly. This was not something he had expected. Why was a boss character showing up here and now? All eight of his Iwa Bunshin sent out a broadside of Dongan at the elder Mokujin, but it just walked forwards, smashing them out of the air like they were pebbles. Shit. It ain't working boss, one Iwa Bunshin shouted. Four of you get into close combat and keep its arms occupied. Naruto ordered, the rest of you attack with the Dongan again when the others have it distracted. The clones followed his orders. Four of them created Gansetsuken and raced to distract the Mokujin up close and personal, while Naruto and the other four made ready to attack with the rock bullet jutsu. The Mokujin chattered a series of rattling wooden clicks and swung a large arm at the Iwa Bunshin, who dodged around it and started attacking the legs and what part of the torso they could reach with their staves. As the wooden monster smashed down in an attempt to smash the clones, Naruto and the others sent five Dongan at it, smashing into the sides of the Mokujin one after another and sending it crashing to the ground. Immediately, the Iwa Bunshin clambered upon it and started stabbing it on the head and upper torso with Kanai and Gansetsuken. Spread out and surround it. Naruto ordered. The reason why it had blocked all of the first barrage was that they all came from the same direction. Once the thing got up, it wouldn't have it so easy. As predicted, the elder Mokujin wasn't finished just yet and stood up, the Iwa Bunshin tumbling off like specks of dirt and crumbling to pieces on impact with the ground. Now, Naruto ordered and five Earthmen here ripped free of the ground and tore through the air at the elder Mokujin from five different directions. The wooden monster was smashed to pieces and scattered all over the area, letting Naruto breath a sigh of relief. Then, boss. It's multiplying. One clone shouted. Sure enough, three regular possessed Mokujin sprouted from the smashed remains of the defeated possessed elder Mokujin. Oh for the love of ramen. Naruto grumbled. Ludicrously high defense, high strength and the ability to spawn lesser versions of itself once defeated. Smash them. He ordered his clones, which they had done with gusto. Now that they knew how to defeat them, even multiple possessed Mokujin were not match for Naruto and his clones. In short order, the three wooden monsters were kindling. Possessed Elder Mokujin, defeated. You gain 1200 EXP. Possessed Mokujin, X3 defeated. You gain 300 EXP. All chakra saturation in sub-area 1 cleared. You gain 500 EXP. You have gained a level. LV7 LV8. You have 5 attribute points to spend. Secondary Earth Affinity, has leveled up. LV4 LV5. Doton. Dongan no Jutsu, has leveled up. LV3 LV4. Doton. Iwa Bunshin no Jutsu, has leveled up. LV4 LV5. Sweet. He commented. That one big Mokujin netted him as much EXP as Mogura Wagura had. The corpses of the three possessed Mokujin dissolved to reveal three more high quality Bakan and about a thousand Ryo altogether. The possessed elder Mokujin dissolved to show a single Bakan, but not a regular one. It glowed with a golden light. Golden Bakan of Fortune, training weapon a wooden sword carved from a Shinboku, sacred tree, and blessed by a priest. Its divine aura repels lesser demons and brings good fortune to the one who wields it. Reduces random encounters from lesser demonic or lesser yokai enemies by 100%. Increases luck by 25. Durability. 35 35 bludgeoning damage. STR plus 1 5. Huh, yes that's a useful thing to have. Naruto commented as he put it away. As he warped back to sub area 1, he debated about whether to go on to sub area 2. He decided against it as he was hungry. And he was low on chakra. That's that for today then. He muttered and headed out of the training ground. Chapter 10. Blades and Shadows One month later Higurashi's weapon shop. Whoa. Naruto said in awe. He was looking at the pair of Tonto lying on the counter of the shop. The blades shone brightly in the light reflected from the illumination provided by the lamps. The blades were simple, but the distinctive ripple along the edge, the hammond, spoke of blades produced by a master smith. The blades had obviously had a horomanashi at them, as one had a flower pattern engraved that looked like camellias and the other had patterns that looked like violets. I see you noticed the engravings. Higurashi Tatsuhiko observed with a smile, that's Kane's work. She's good really good at that sort of fine detail work. Ordinarily, we would let you name them and then engrave a horimono to match it, but with these, we named them for you. This one is Subaki and this one is Sumire. 
In Hankotoba, Sumire means honesty and Subaki, when they're red, means perishing with grace. Cool. Naruto said. He meant it. The hilts of the blades were wrapped in colored sukumaki bearing their respective colors, while the small suba had more fine engraving work on them. Now Naruto-kun, are you sure that you want to give us most of the remaining chakra? He asked with a look of concern. Before Naruto could answer, a box popped up. Karmic choice. This question will determine the end result of your relationship with the Higurashi family. Choose carefully, because words once spoken cannot be taken back. Choice 1, righteous, sure. It's yours. Immediate advancement to, honored, reputation with, Higurashi weapons and apparels, Higurashi Kanae, and, Higurashi Tatsuhiko. Advancement to, well-liked, reputation with, Higurashi Tenten. Choice 2, pragmatic, on second thought, no. I might need it. Minus 50 relationship with all Higurashi family members, receive all remaining chakra metal. The choice, for Naruto, was obvious. Sure thing. Naruto said with a nod, you might need it for something for the village. Righteous, choice made. Plus 1 to, righteous, alignment. Title. Righteous acolyte, obtained. Guide, updated. Titles, and, alignment, added. Received Tonto, Sumire. Received Tonto, Subaki. That's very good of you Naruto-kun. Tatsuhiko boomed with a smile, I can't thank you enough. Take these as a token of gratitude. Reaching under the counter, the blacksmith pulled out a set of black fingerless gloves with metal over the back of the hand. The emblem of the hidden leaf was engraved on them metal and it shone as if it had just been freshly polished. Which was actually very likely. Wow, thanks, the blonde boy said in awe. Ha ha, no problem. The man grinned, now, in addition to the blades, I can give you a set of sheets for them. How do you want to carry them? At the small of my back. Naruto replied, miming drawing the blades from that location. M, I see. Tatsuhiko nodded seriously, I think I have what you're looking for over here. He walked over, grabbed a set of sheets for a nearby rack, and brought them back to show the boy. They were plain black and had built-in sharpening stones. What was special about them was that they were designed to be able to be crossed over one another and secured tightly. These will serve you well. Tatsuhiko said as he carefully sheathed each blade into each sheath, I'll give you a care package as well, whetstones, cloths and a manual on how to sharpen your blades. Saying so, he placed all of the above mentioned items, plus the tanto, into a storage scroll and handed it to Naruto. Remember, you aren't allowed to carry weapons openly until you become a genin. The man cautioned Naruto sternly. Hi. Naruto accepted the scroll carefully and put it into his pocket. Wanted to ask you something about your Kodachi. Tatsuhiko said gruffly, now, I can do a standard design, or I can alter it somewhat. Alter it how? Naruto asked. For example, adding an edge on the flat of the blade, about 5 inches long near the tip. The blacksmith replied, drawing a display Kodachi and gesturing at where he meant, not many blades are double-edged, especially not Kodachi, so it'll be a nasty surprise for anyone you cross blades with. I could also make the hilt extra long and add a caken into it for emergencies. Hidden arrays to store weapons, there's a lot of things I could do if you want me to. As for payment, the chakra metal you've given my family means that the sky's the limit. The blonde boy was stumped as he thought about it. He really had no idea about what he wanted for his blade. Being given basically a free hand to customize it with no limit on his finances was such a novelty that he had not expected it. Um, can I leave it up to you to decide? Naruto asked, I, really have no idea what to choose. Tatsuhiko nodded understandingly. That's fine. I have the metal heating up in the back right now, so I'll get started on it right away. Is there anything else you want to buy before I get started? Three standard sets of shuriken. Naruto replied, I ran out the other day. Still clearing out training ground 13, A. Eh? Tatsuhiko asked as he grabbed the requested items, how far are you in? Still just the first two sub-areas. Naruto scowled, I go away for two days and the chakra mutations reappear. It's gotten to the point that it's ridiculous. But I didn't want to try my luck further and until I had some proper weapons. He patted the scroll meaningfully and the blacksmith nodded approvingly. Always know when you might be in over your head. A good trait for a shinobi to have. He said, as for the resurgence of the chakra mutations, it's because the chakra saturation seeps back into the area from the rest after a short while if cleared. 
you're going to have to kill all of the chakra mutations in all of the areas before the saturation will be removed completely. Something to work towards. Naruto said with a shrug as he pulled on his new gloves, these look kick ass. Thanks, Tatsu Oji-san. No problem, he chuckled, now I'd better get back to my forge. I'll let Ten Chan know you were here. She's going to be thrilled about the chakra metal. I'm going to make her a katana out of some of it. Glad to help. Naruto grinned, see ya later. As the blonde boy trotted off, Tatsuhiko chuckled. He really was just like his mother. Heading to his forge, he watched as Kanae worked the bellows. I take it he liked the tanto, she said without missing a beat. Yep. He even reaffirmed that we can keep the excess chakra metal. Tatsuhiko replied, he also left exactly what to do with his kodachi up to me. The poor boy looked stunned at the idea that I would let him tell me what to do with his sword. This village, has a lot, to answer for. Kanae grunted as she fanned the flame higher, so what, are you gonna do? Remember the plans of been refining for Tenchan's sword? He asked, I was thinking about using Naruto-kun's weapon as a beta test for it. Is that wise? His wife asked as she paused to check the forge, or ethical. Nothing will go wrong. Tatsuhiko assured her, I've worked things out so all the additions and modifications come together smoothly. I've already done an alpha test with regular weapon grade Tamahagainen, aside from some minor issues that I've fixed, it turned out pretty damn good. Yes, but that was a katana, not a kodachi. Kanae pointed out reasonably. A few calculations and minor adjustments and it'll be fine. Tatsuhiko said firmly, a kodachi is pretty much the same as a katana, aside from being slightly smaller. It won't be hard to adjust for that. If you are certain. Kanae sighed, you start hammering the metal out, and I'll have a look over your plans. Yes dear. Tatsuhiko said, they're in my planning office. Later Naruto's apartment. Naruto used, observe, on his new equipment as soon as he finished his lunch. Konoha Battle Gloves Black, high quality gloves used by Chunin Rank Shinobi and higher in Kanahagakur. Offering protection for the knuckles in Taijutsu and protection for the back of the hand to block weapons, they are emblazoned with the leaf of Kanahagakur. Def plus 1 5 durability, 50 50, Sumire, a tanto crafted by master blacksmith Higurashi Tatsuhiko, the blade has been engraved by a Horamanashi with violets. Made of chakra metal, which is stronger than steel and is able to channel chakra through it naturally, it is a very good weapon. LB15 short weapon, mastercrafted, chakra weapon durability, 95 95 piercing damage, S plus 10 slashing damage, S plus 25 bludgeoning damage, S plus 1 tsubaki, a tanto crafted by master blacksmith Higurashi, the blade has been engraved by a horamanashi with camellias. Made of chakra metal, which is stronger than steel and is able to channel chakra through it naturally, it is a very good weapon. LB15 short weapon, mastercrafted, chakra weapon durability, 95 95 piercing damage, S plus 10 slashing damage, S plus 25 bludgeoning damage, S plus 1, nice, Naruto whistled, wonder what being mastercrafted is to the blades. When he tapped the word, another screen popped up. Mastercrafted, items that have been, mastercrafted, have been carved, forged, built or otherwise created by a master craftsman at the peak of their skill. As such, all, mastercrafted, items receive a bonus towards a random stat. Do you wish to have all such bonuses shown? Y, N, uh, obviously. Naruto muttered. He hit, Y, and looked at Sumair and Tsubaki's screens again. Tsubaki received a plus 10 bonus to piercing damage, while Sumire got plus 15 to slashing damage. Naruto felt a bit giddy. These weapons would make his life so much easier when it came to clearing out training ground 13. Now then, where am I at? He muttered and checked his status. Name. Uzumaki Naruto. Class. The gamer level. 12 next level. 30.84% title. Academy student plus 25% EXP to LB10, age, 12 HP, 1500-1500 CP, 1500-1500 STR, 39 STA, 44 plus 10, DEX, 30 INT, 30 WIS, 34 LUCK. His stats were, pardon the lack of modesty, pretty damn good in his opinion. He had finally gotten rid of the, malnourished, status, which had added the missing 5 points to all his physical stats. He had also raised his int and wisp by quite a bit, which was nice. 
His weights were on level 2 now as he had adjusted after the last month and they were no longer a burden at level 1. As for his skills, he had trained hard and all of his self-taught styles were at level 10, at which point they had hit was his ability classed as a level cap, meaning they couldn't go any higher. The same had applied to his basic Hakage Taijutsu, but he had solved that problem by absorbing the intermediate Hakage Taijutsu book. The self-taught styles were more problematic. Sure, the Bojutsu wasn't as important, but the Nito Ryu Tanto style and the Kodachi Kenjutsu style were. Uruka sensei had said he would have a look in the shinobi section of the library, but that still meant he couldn't improve them yet. And graduation was six whole months away. On a more positive side of things, thanks to the drops made by the Mokujin in sub-area 1 and the Ninmenju in sub-area 2, he had a healthy stock of Bakken, practice dummies and practice spears. A big downer was that, once he had passed level 10, he no longer received the 25% extra EXP that his academy student title had granted him, which made leveling up somewhat tedious. Come to think of it, didn't I get a new title earlier on? Naruto thought with a frown. He opened the title section and winced, as it was row upon row of question marks. Scrolling down, the boy spotted two titles that he had access to. Academy student grants 25% extra EXP while under LV10. Signifies the bearer is a student at a shinobi academy. Only removable at graduation. Righteous acolyte increases ninjutsu power by 1% while possessing more than 0, but less than 100, righteous alignment. Signifies that the bearer has taken the first step down a righteous path. This sucks ass, Naruto pouted. He then decided to find out what this, alignment, business was all about by checking the guide. Alignment in you, alignment is your moral and ethical perspective. Basically, if you act in a moral fashion, you can be considered, lawful, or, good, whereas if you act in an amoral fashion, you can be considered, unlawful, or, evil. Your words and actions influence which alignment you go down. Unlike in other worlds, you, Uzumaki Naruto, reside in a world where nothing is cut and dried. Morality is very much in flux, especially for shinobi. To represent this, there are various different paths of alignment that you can go down simultaneously. Very few paths exclude the ability to travel down others until very far down a path, but there are those that preclude another path immediately. The various alignment paths you discover will be added here as and when you find them, not before. Righteous, this path has also been known as Paragon, Lawful Good and various other epithets of a similar nature. One who strides down this path is one who will try to do what is right, regardless of the cost to themselves. Current alignment, 10 one thousandths. Pragmatic, known as neutral or unaligned in various universes, one who follows this path follows an expedient path. They will act in the most grounded fashion possible, saving only those who they feel can be saved and not trying for more. Current alignment, 0 one thousandths. Huh, Naruto said with a shrug. He personally didn't think he suited either of those stances completely. He also felt mildly offended that his ability was trying to compartmentalize him. Moving on, new skill. Naruto grinned as he closed the window and grabbed the book regarding weapons care and maintenance. You have acquired the, to the point and along the edge, skill book. Do you wish to learn this? Why, n, hell yes. Naruto grinned as he hit the appropriate button and watched the book dissolve into blue light and enter him. Edged Weapon Maintenance, LV1, 0 hundred, having a sword or dagger is all very fine and dandy, but if it's blunt as a stick, you'd be better off with a club. This skill allows you to oil, sharpen and otherwise maintain any edged weapon, from a cake into the head of a spear. It also grants a buff to any weapon you treat with this skill. Sharpens a weapon for two days. Grants plus five to piercing and slashing attacks for the duration of the, sharpening. Restores 5 durability for each, sharpening, oiling, and, maintenance, action carried out on edged weapons. Requires, weapon maintenance, materials to use. Kick ass. Naruto declared. If this skill was this good at level 1, he couldn't wait to see what the higher levels were like. Heading down to the training room, Naruto pulled a practice dummy out of his inventory. It was one of the common drops he received for killing Ninmenju, the human-faced trees, and their weaker spawns, Ninmenka, the human-faced fruit. The dummies were basic wooden human shapes and were actually meant for taijutsu practice, but as Naruto had 50 of the things in his inventory, he could spare one for training how to infuse his blades with chakra. 
Drawing his weapons from their sheaths, Naruto closed his eyes and focused. He tried to guide his chakra into the blades, but was stymied by an uncomfortable feeling. Frowning, he tried again, this time being a bit more forceful, thrusting the chakra into the tanto he held. You're doing it wrong, a voice said from behind him. Naruto jumped and whirled around. A bearded man in a standard Jonin's outfit and a sash with the kanji for fire around his waist stood leaning against the doorframe. The smoking guardian LV. Sarutobi Asuma, Asen, who are you? Naruto asked, keeping up the facade that he didn't know who the man was. The name Sarutobi Asuma, kid. The bearded man said, my old man sent me over here today to teach you how to use those blades properly. You're Gigi's son. Naruto asked, you do look a lot alike. That made Asuma guffaw loudly. Ha. Does he know you call him Gigi? Yup. He seems to find it refreshing. Naruto replied with a grin. I'll bet. The Jonin grinned back, Oyaji told me that your primary affinity is Futon, right? That's my primary affinity as well and I use the same jutsu you were trying there with my trench knives. He took an odd looking knife from his rear shuriken pouch and held it up. Seen from the side, it resembled a fang, with holes for the fingers and the wickedly sharp blade was made more dangerous by the serrated section just in front of the finger holes. Naruto was curious and used, observe, on it. Trench knife, a mastercrafted blade forged by Higurashi Tatsuhiko in his youth, this blade has seen wear, tear and blood through the years and has never failed its wielder. Used in a pair. Durability. 150 150 ths Knuckle duster, short weapon, mastercrafted, chakra metal weapon, paired weapon, piercing damage. S plus 10 slashing damage. S plus 15 bludgeoning damage. S plus 15, that looks dangerous. The blonde boy observed. It can be. Asuma agreed, watch what happens now. Suddenly, a blue aura enveloped the blade and Naruto's hearing could pick up a faint noise, a mild shrieking sound. That's the sound of two opposing chakra currents grinding together, sharpening each other to form the blade. Asuma explained. He stepped over to the practice dummy and slashed it diagonally with his trench knife, the top half sliding off the lower half a few seconds later. Whoa! Naruto exclaimed with shock. Wind is known as the war element. Asuma said as he released the jutsu, in my opinion, it is the best mix of offense and defense at short to mid range, especially when you use the chakra nagashi no jutsu, chakra flow jutsu, in a bladed weapon. What was your secondary element? Earth. Ah. Well, from what I've gathered, using chakra nagashi with doden chakra ups the durability and hardness of the weapon to ridiculous levels. Asuma nodded, one guy the first saw used it to smash his opponent's weapon into smithereens with one blow. Again, whoa. Naruto said with wide eyes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Asuma said modestly, now try to do as I described with your tanto. Imagine in your mind two streams of chakra colliding with each other, sharpening themselves into one single blade that covers the entirety of your blades, but not the hilts. Nodding, Naruto closed his eyes and focused on what Asuma had told him. He imagined his chakra reaching down, two channels per weapon, wrapping around the blades of the tanto and clashing into each other, forming a blade along the edge of the weapons. You've got it, Asuma said proudly. Naruto opened his eyes and saw that both tanto were covered in the blue chakra of the chakra nagashi no jutsu. He swiped them at the remains of the dummy, cleaving it into three pieces. Damn, this is lethal. He said in disbelief. Naruto ignored the numerous screens that had popped up around him, saving them until he was alone. Yep. So not using it unless you're out on a mission outside the village. Asuma said sternly. Naruto nodded as he ended the jutsu, returning his tanto to normal blades. Mind if I have a look at your weapons? Asuma asked. Uh, sure. Naruto nodded. He flipped the weapons around so that the hilts were facing the jonin and offered them to him. Asuma took them carefully and examined them with an experienced eye. Looks like old Tatsuhiko outdid himself with these beauties. The bearded man observed, they're almost as good as my trench knives. Tatsuhiko works best when he's creating unique weapons, but even these are top quality. Carefully, he slid the blades back into their sheaths and handed them back to Naruto. Thanks um, Naruto said, why'd you teach me? Active duty shinobi aren't allowed to teach academy students. This made Asuma smirk slightly. Ah, but there's the thing. I am a former member of the 12 Guardian Ninja, a group of shinobi who are the shinobi guard of the Fire Daimyo. 
I finished my tour of duty with them last week and arrived here two days ago. Oyaji gave me a month off before I have to officially return to active duty and as I need an apartment, he suggested seeing the landlord of the Amekaj apartments, one Uzumaki Naruto. Sound familiar? It certainly did. The official story was that the Hokage had purchased this building and had assigned one of the apartments to Naruto. What was actually the truth was that Naruto was a part owner of the building, and the Hokage was the other. Sarutobi handled the paperwork, while Naruto was the on-site landlord. Okay. Do you want an apartment here, Asuma-sensei? Naruto asked, and if so, is there anything you look for in an apartment? I would like a place with a view of the Hokage monument, if at all possible. Asuma replied. Ah. Got just the place for you. Naruto smirked, follow me. Resealing his tanto into the scroll and pocketing it, Naruto led the younger Sarutobi to a room on the opposite side of the building and one floor down from Naruto's own apartment. It was just as big as Naruto's own apartment and had a very good view of the Hokage monument. Nice. Asuma said with an appreciative look around the room, which was clean as a whistle. I was expecting the place to look messy and dusty, but it isn't. I can use the cage bunch and no jutsu, so I have them cleaning the place while I'm away at the academy. Naruto explained. Doing so had helped to raise the level of his shadow clones by quite a bit. The Iwa Bunshin, not so much, as they crumbled to pieces if Naruto moved more than a block away from them. Still useful when he was closer than that though. He had also developed the skill, housework, because of it. Combining the experience of all his clones had raised him to level 2, on the second day. His current level with housework was level 10, and it showed no signs of slowing down either. Good tactic. Asuma said approvingly, well, now we need to talk money. Most places charge monthly rent, as I'm sure you know. Naruto nodded glumly. He had paid over 2,000 ryo a month for his former shitty apartment, when the place had only been worth less than half of that. Considering how this place is in pretty good nick considering it was left alone for so long, how does 2,000 a month sound? Asuma asked. That's as much as I paid my old landlord. Naruto exclaimed. For that place. Asuma sounded slightly incredulous. Pops told me about it. You shouldn't have paid more than 1200 ryo a month. Meh. I'm used to it. Naruto shrugged indifferently. Anyway, 2000 ryo sounds good. Shake on it. The two shook hands and sealed the deal. I'm having dinner with the Sarutobi clan tonight. My official, welcome back, party. Asuma informed Naruto. I'll have my brother, Asahi, draw up a rental agreement afterwards and bring it with me so we can sign it tomorrow. The Jonin looked around the empty room again. By the way, what happened to the furniture? It was either taken when the entrance to Anbu HQ was moved or left to rot. Naruto grimaced at the memories his clones had given him of the furniture that had been left, I've had to throw them all out. I would go furniture shopping to replace them, but the likelihood that anyone would be willing to sell me anything isn't high. Asuma frowned at that. You aren't required to provide furniture for a tenant, Naruto. He informed the blonde, all that's required is that the water and power be working properly and that the apartment is in good condition. Gigi told me the water works in all apartments and the power works, all I have to do is go down to the basement and turn it on. Naruto supplied, when'll you want to move in? I'm staying at the Sarutobi compound at the moment, but I'll have to move out in three days. Asuma replied, that okay with you? Sure. I'll turn the power and water on the day before and get everything sorted. Naruto nodded. Okay then. See you later, Yanushi-san. Asuma nodded politely at Naruto before departing. As Naruto walked back to his apartment, he mused at how odd it felt to be called a landlord. He immediately resolved not to be a pain in the ass like his old landlord. Sitting down, he examined the windows that had popped up in order of appearance skill created as a result of repeated specific actions the skill lesser chakra control has been created lesser chakra control passive lv1 0 hundred exp chakra control allows the user to control their chakra although some jutsu can be used with barely any chakra control most average jutsu and other chakra tricks will require at less this level of skill allows the use of d-ranked jutsu and chakra techniques Gains EXP from chakra control exercises. Reduces the cost of jutsu by 1%. Increases chakra point regeneration by 1%. Finally. Naruto yelled in delight. 
Do you wish to apply unused chakra control exercise EXP from tree climbing exercise to lesser chakra control Y N? Duh. Naruto snorted as he hit the Y button. Calculating, done, lesser chakra control has risen to LV3. A. Naruto mentally calculated that his tree climbing exercise skill was level 10. Shouldn't that yield a higher level up? Shrugging, he moved on to the next notice. Skill created. As a result of a specific action, the skill Chakra Nagashi no Jutsu has been created. Chakra Nagashi no Jutsu, active, level 1, 0 hundred EXP. The Chakra Flow Jutsu is the ability to coat a weapon with chakra and bestowing some sort of special effect to it via the elemental affinity that the chakra possesses. Physical contact is with the target weapon is required in order to use this jutsu. Wind Chakra can turn any blade into a lethally sharp weapon. Earth Chakra increases the density and hardness of the weapon. Fire Chakra surrounds the weapon in a burning aura, incinerating all it touches. Lightning Chakra acts similarly to Wind Chakra, with the added effect of numbness, although both effects are due to causing intense vibrations in the weapon. Water Chakra extends the length of the weapon and adds a cutting effect only slightly inferior to Wind Chakra. In addition, Neutral Chakra merely forms a protective cover over the weapon, reducing any harm to the weapon. Hand signs. None. Wielder chakra types usable. Wind, earth, neutral futon chakra nagashi. Usable on edged weapons only. Creates a blade over the weapon that adds a plus 2o increase to slashing and piercing damage. Grants plus 1o durability for duration of activation. Costs 25 CP per minute to use. Doden chakra nagashi. Usable on any weapon. Grants an increase of plus 2o to the weapon's bludgeoning and piercing damage. Piercing damage only added if an edged weapon increases the weapon's durability by plus 1.5. Grants plus 2O death to the weapon. Costs 28 CP per minute to use. Neutral Chakra Nagashi. Usable on any weapon. Grants an increase of plus 1O to the weapon's bludgeoning, slashing and piercing damage, applied depending on the weapon. Grants plus 5 death to the weapon. Costs 30 CP per minute to use. Naruto had to raise his eyebrows at that. The differences between the various CP costs of the three Chakra Nagashi were fairly obvious. He had the greatest affinity for Wind Chakra, so the cost was the least, with Earth Chakra second because he had worked hard at it. Neutral Chakra couldn't be worked on, so it had what he assumed was the basic cost. Still, the effects of all three were useful. He would have to think about something to use for the Doden Chakra Nagashi. A collapsible baton made of chakra metal, maybe. Shaking his head, he looked at the other windows. Quest alert. A man's home is his castle. Serutobi Asuma, the son of your surrogate grandfather, and former member of the Twelve Guardian Shinobi, is going to rent an apartment from you in the Amekage apartment building. Prepare the room, get the water and power on and sign all the necessary documents before he arrives in three days. Quest reward. Plus 1000, EXP. Plus 2000 Ryo, Serutobi Asuma is a tenant, random futon ninjutsu scroll. Quest failure. Serutobi Asuma is a tenant. Accept. Y N hitting the Y button. Naruto cataloged everything that had to be done and in what order. Most of the preliminary stuff had already been filed by his Gigi, so all he had to do was inform the water and power companies that he would be ramping up the consumption of their respective resource. Making two shadow clones, he sent one to each company before he made another couple to go over the Asuma's chosen apartment with a fine tooth comb and make repairs as and when required. Settling down again, he realized that Sakura was going to be over soon for her taijutsu practice. This was the Pinket girl's least favorite thing to do, but she did keep her word, so she came nevertheless. One thing that had changed was that Sakura's tutoring sessions had ceased adding anything to his interwis except at very long intervals. Checking the mission in the quest log, he discovered that it had updated itself, saying that he now required 15 tutoring sessions with Sakura in order to get plus 1 wis and plus 1 int, although the amount needed to improve his relationship had decreased from 5 sessions to 3. Naruto guessed that the amount that his int and wis had risen by had prompted whatever being that governed his gamer ability to balance it out. The higher your stats are, the harder it is to improve them. Sakura, on the other hand, was finding it hard going with regard to her training. She was getting training from the academy, training from Naruto and training from her father. She was very much exhausted. 
he had been sneaking looks at her stats and she had only gained a single point in str and sta in the last month and a few days which was slightly worrying for his growing a cherry blossom quest when sakura arrived he asked her exactly what exercises she did other than sparring calisthenics sakura replied you know sit-ups push-ups star jumps that sort of thing you should try jogging naruto suggested shinobi do a lot of that so it would be useful to get into the swing of things his pink-haired training partner sighed at that but was unable to refute it over the next couple of hours naruto helped sakura alter the hawkage style she had been taught so it suited her body stances and keita had to be changed and then sakura had to experiment with the various punches kick blocks and the like so she could use them effectively after all of that she would spar with naruto who didn't pull any punches in regards to his speed he was way faster than ino was if not quite as acrobatic so if sakura got used to his level of speed she'd be able to deal with ino more easily or so he hoped anyway damn sakura said mildly as she got up again after being knocked back onto her butt again i'm not getting any better at this considering you've only been at this for just over a month you're doing very well naruto assured her why haven't you ever won any spars if you're this good at taijutsu sakura asked with a frown because almost every single time i've been up against sasuke naruto replied he's a tem but he is very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat just about the only thing he's better at is ninjutsu how can you tell sakura asked in confusion see how he wears his clan symbol on his back naruto asked according to uruka sensei only adult uchiha are allowed to wear their clan symbol on their back like that meaning they have to be able to use kaden gokaku no jutsu fire style grand fireball jutsu sasuke kun can use a c rank elemental jutsu the pinket yelped in shock from what i can remember he started wearing it just before the uchiha massacre naruto continued so that means he's been able to use it for six years or thereabouts he used it at six sakura gawked he has talent shame itachi screwed his head up naruto said with a shrug that's a bit cold naruto sakura said with a frown he had his entire clan massacred by his own brother anyone would be screwed in the head after that i know naruto sighed he really didn't want to talk about the tem it's just other people have had difficult lives as well you know and they haven't cut themselves off from all human contact sakura nodded slowly i get your meaning but cut him a little slack okay because it's you asking i'll try naruto sighed now have you thought about your genin outfit um not really sakura replied isn't what i have good enough for d ranks yeah naruto said but for c ranks where you'll be facing enemy combatants albeit just bandits not so much no armor no weapons other than kanai and shuriken yeah let's just say not good and leave it like that sakura winced i'll talk to my dad about it cool oh i have to give you something naruto said wait here he trotted out and up to his apartment so he could access his inventory and pull out the chakra strength enhancement scroll he'd gotten from that spar with sasuke before heading back he'd tried to learn it before but it required average chakra control level 20 so he was out of luck sakura though here you go he said as he entered the dojo a reward for your hard work this is a jutsu scroll sakura asked as she gingerly accepted it yup for ninpo chakra kyoto kyoka no jutsu ninja art chakra strength enhancement jutsu naruto replied my chakra controls too shaky to use it but you i think it'll work out sakura was speed reading the scroll this this is what incredible she exclaimed where'd you get it from i found it in a training field i'm working at naruto replied mixing truth and lies it's been abandoned for a while and hokage gigi told me anything i found that didn't have someone's name burned or signed onto it was mine to keep wow well thank you naruto sakura said still reading the scroll avidly this is wow it isn't tsunade of the sanin's chakra enhanced strength but it is a step up from regular muscle power that's for sure naruto nodded the Chakra Kyoto Kyoka no Jutsu was a heavily watered down version of the Shodime Hokage's Kongoriki no Jutsu, Adamantine Power Jutsu, one that every shinobi with sufficient chakra control could learn, unlike the parent Jutsu. 
when he discovered that he couldn't learn the jutsu, he had read it physically. Don't use it instead of your muscles in training. He cautioned her. Hi, hi, Sakura said wearily, putting the scroll into her pouch, are we done for today, Naruto? I'm still tired from earlier. Sure thing, Sakura-chan. Naruto nodded, see you tomorrow. The pinket bade him farewell and headed for home. Naruto looked at the scroll over by the remains of the dummy and grinned. Tomorrow, after the academy, he would go and kick ass in sub-area 3 of training ground 13 and break in his new weapons. He couldn't wait. Elsewhere in a room barely lit by stuttering candlelight, a masked individual, clothed so that their gender was undeterminable, knelt before a desk covered in papers. Behind that desk sat a man clad in a black and white kimono, with one arm and one eye bound in bandages. Report, Agent Number 35. The bandaged man ordered, his voice inflectionless. The Jinchuriki has been progressing well. The kneeling man replied tonelessly, each time he faces Uchiha Sasuke, he draws closer to achieving victory over him. He trains with Haruno Sakura three times a week and is otherwise spotted heading towards training area 13. The bandaged man gave no indication that he was either pleased or displeased by this information. I see. Have we acquired any leverage on the Anbu who guard the former HQ entrance? Negative. Agent 35 replied, they are part of the current Hokage guard section of the Anbu and their identities are classified beyond the ability of any of our agents to acquire. This time a distinct look of displeasure flashed across the bandaged man's face. Anything else to report? Sarutobi Asuma has returned from his tour of duty with the 12 Guardian Ninja. The kneeling agent stated, he is currently residing in the Sarutobi compound, but plans to move into the Amekage apartments within the next three days. A scowl crossed the bandaged man's face. Curse that old monkey, he hissed, arrange for an accident to occur to Sarutobi Asuma tomorrow. Nothing fatal, but it has to put him out of commission for at least a week. Prep Squad 1 for an abduction mission in training ground 13 in two days' time. Hi, Danzo-sama, the agent said before fading out into the encroaching darkness. Shimura Danzo, the Yami no Shinobi, allowed himself a small grin before turning his attention back to his paperwork. The weapon was as good as his. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what-ifs and support the author. See you guys in the next video.